Yes, we are back here on the Dark Waters channel. And I noticed that Dark Waters had to check some of you yesterday about the lizards. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You see, many of you do not understand. We keep it 100% real here in the Dark Waters, as some of you may say. This next clip that I am going to play for you is a caller from Chasing the Truth with Sean Graham. He is one of the show hosts on the Dark Waters Network. Yes, yes, I have told you over and over again that we only deal in the real stories. But people do not listen. So, again, listen for yourself and see what the people have to say. Second anonymous caller, we'll get you on the air here. And you're live on the air. What's your name and where are you from? Beth, North Carolina. Hey, Beth. What's on your mind tonight? Hey. Um, I really don't have anything to do with the, the cow mutilation situation, but um, my husband and I have experienced a lot of stuff um, where we live at. So. Okay. So what's uh, what kind of stuff that you got going on there? Um, well, it started back in 2019. My husband and myself used to go hiking. I grew up here um, where I live at, and we live about about 13 to 15 miles from Yori uh, National Forest mm -hmm. in North Carolina. And um, we were outside, and at this point in time, I didn't really um, believe in dog man or Bigfoot or anything like that. Like, I was totally kind of, like, against stuff like that. Um <laughs> When I was a small child, I had seen, like, what I had thought was a UFO, but my dad told me it was, you know, possibly um, a military hovercraft at that point in time. But anyway, we were outside. Um, my mother had gotten sick. She passed away. We were outside at the house we were staying at. And um, it was after midnight, and we were taking the dogs out. And I had a little chihuahua and a shih tzu and also um a dog we had rescued that was bigger and our chihuahua had did this really big jump back almost like a cat would so we were like it was just kind of awkward mm -hmm. so i thought that he may have seen like a copperhead snake or something so we brought the dogs back inside the house um grabbed flashlights went back outside and we looked around and i started hearing like popping noises um to my right like tree branches breaking and then across the street from us because our house is surrounded by woods um and then on the left and then above me and i'm thinking this is kind of weird you know like it's coming from all directions so um at that point in time um we didn't really think much about it, it was kind of like creepy but i thought maybe it was coyotes or something like that that was kind of creeping up on us and um we all of a sudden like immediately after that was really fast like we heard something like yell it sounded like a guy like hyped up at like a football game mm -hmm. like really like quick and we turned around because it sounded like it was coming from beside of our house and when i looked back i didn't see anything there was nothing there so i'm like okay um and the next day we went walking around um like the perimeter of our wooded area around our house and there was some places that looked kind of bare like things that you know things have been sitting there or laying there and um but after that like all kinds of stuff just started happening like one thing after another um we had discovered like i did there was a place like right out by um, by our heat pump at the light pole that way we have an outside light um but it was right near there there was like a, it looked like a tunnel and it was i would say like eight and a half foot in height but it was built by branches and it went straight in and then curved around and there was this huge like nest thing that was built with sticks and my husband was in the marine corps so i'm like telling him you know what could be doing this you know thinking about a bear we really don't have bear in this area but i was like at this point i was just thinking about like what could it be you know because i have three kids at home you know like this is weird it's just not making sense um and you know, he was like, no, and I mean, I had thought about everything that you could think of, you know, just trying to think there was a logical explanation for it, and eventually, I turned to uh, a Bigfoot site on the, on Facebook, and I started digging in, and, um, you know, I had seen things like, you know, 
tree branches and like structures and these alleged things people were posting and I was still on the fence about it and I had people that were inboxing me um you know talking about you know maybe it was a dogman I was like okay this is a little bit too far now like you know dogman I don't think so at that point in time I really did not believe in like any of of these things and I was just kind of like really not knowing you know what it was but we still were going outside at night. Um, I created, like, a private group on my page where, like, I was just inviting people that I trusted in that group mm-hmm. um, on my personal Facebook page. And we were going live because, like, for some weird reason, like, I felt more comfortable going live at night because I'm like, if something gets me, <laughs> somebody's going to see it, you know. And um, But there was, like, so many nights we were sitting outside, and it was... I mean, it sounded like an elephant coming through our woods, and I'm not lying. And I have never experienced anything like this in my life. Like an elephant, you could hear every tree branch, like, breaking. And this thing would stop, and it would start huffing. Like, I mean, it was like these big huffs, like breaths. Like something, it, it was ridiculous. And my husband was like, be still, don't move. And, I mean, there were times where I was in tears. And, you know, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know you know, who to reach out to. I was like, you know, I was in fear for my kid's life. I, um, we've had our door pushed in at our house, our front door. Um, there's been things that's knocked on our house, which was odd. And my kids were like thinking it was me and my husband coming home and it, you know, was not us. Um, there's been oh, so wow. many things that I could not even like attempt to like explain. But we were on um, Facebook Live one day also and if you go continue by our house and go up the road, there's a big field. Um, and this is the same field that brought me back to, like, me seeing this UFO thing when I was a child here. Um, there's a big field on the left, and they it used to be um, a cow pasture. Mm-hmm. Now it's more of, like, farmland where, you know, another person owns it, and they usually farm tobacco and soybeans. And um, we were walking through that area because I didn't really, like, not want to go outside of my house at this point in time at this point in time um but we were walking to that area one day and i told my husband i was like i feel weird like i feel like you know something's watching me and there was these structures that we were seeing like those like igloos and things like that and i have like a lot of pictures to back all this up but we were on live stream and i just felt really awkward now was we heard this big thud and as soon as that thud happened I told my husband, I'm like, I'm getting out of here. Like, I move. I'm like, we're going back home. This is it. I'm done hiking, walking, anything, looking for anything. I'm done. Mm -hmm. And so when I got home and I replayed our live stream, you can literally see when you slow the video feed down, you can see these things that look approximately like four and a half to six foot in height running across the screen. And, like, it was, they look like little monkeys. It is the weirdest thing. And I never sent anything in because I had people saying, well, if you do, you know, the government could be, you know, possibly something might happen. I mean, I had the fear of life, like, for my kids. I'm thinking, okay, the government's going to see something. You know, I'm going to have all these people at my house. I don't know what to do. Um, But it's just, you know, I had to take it, like, kind of day by day. Um, There's been howls over here at night. Like, every single night there's howling. It sounds like. It's not really Cody howls. It's like these long, like drawn out howls, like constant for like a few hours. Um, and then it turned to we were seeing orbs. That sort of happening. And it's just been like a chain reaction that went from like one degree of this, like, you know, then there was an orb situation after that video feed. Um, that night was really bizarre and crazy. Um, that story and then after that we got growled at in our driveway that was the worst um growled i was so scared i couldn't tell something growled at us okay i don't know what it was um it was it was horrible like i was we were out there there was a ball of light and i would say <clears> it was about the size of a basketball uh approximately 200 yards away down the road from our house going toward the main road um and the main road still a back road but it was on the left side of our road and it just looked like it kept floating continuous like in the air just like back and forth like floating 
um, and it was about six foot off the ground. And my husband was, like, looking at this thing, and I'm like, you know, he thought it might have been a person out down the road with, like, a flashlight, you know, or, like, mm-hmm. a lantern. Um, he didn't know what it was. But, you know, after all this stuff had happened, I'm like, you know, I'm not going down there. I'm not messing with it. I don't care nothing about it. You know, I don't, you know, I didn't give a shit. Like, I, I didn't want to be around stuff like that, like, after all this other stuff had happened. So, anyway, um, he was so caught up in going down to see this ball of light one night. We're sitting there, and he's trying to take his phone and, you know, take video feed of this light. And, he, he he got some images of it, but they were kind of, I don't know, it's kind of funky looking like, you know, with pixely. Um, and you can't really make out what it is. It just looks like a ball of light. But um, when he was down there in the driveway and he was looking at that thing, I was looking up in the sky. And, you know, because we started seeing these things that were like, you know, solid lights in the sky just like kind of hovering around. And I made the comment, I said, for some reason... I can't get these things to pick up, and I couldn't, like, with my phone. Like, I would think I was videoing something, and it wasn't videoing. I was thinking I was taking a picture, Mm -hmm. and for some reason, I could not. I could see it with my eyes, but my phone was not picking it up. But as soon as I said that, like, something growled, and it was, I can't even, it was like a Bengal tiger and like a like a, a grizzly bear combined, but worse. Like, it was, like, my whole body vibrated. It was unreal. And when I told it, immediately when it done that, I turned around, looked at him, and we both ran, like, as fast as we could. And I, when I got to our, um, right at our house, I, like, folded over, and I couldn't even talk. That's how scared I was. And I've never been that scared in my life. Um, I don't know. I didn't see anything. I didn't, you know, like, I didn't even give time to even look for anything. But, like, as soon as that thing growled, I didn't, you know, looking back on it, I didn't see anything at all, which is the weird thing. Um but uh i really don't know have an answer for what that was um so i kind of just you know i started leaning like thinking maybe these these things are connected to ufos or maybe it's just like a whole you know thing with like paranormal stuff going on and you know the ufo thing going on and you have the cryptid thing going on um you know you start digging and thinking you know like what the what ifs um Mm -hmm. you know it's just you know, so much stuff. I mean, I watch uh, Skinwalker Ranch a lot, and I'm thinking, you know, with the anomalies they have there, you know, maybe there's something like that around this area. Because it's just, it's so much stuff. It's just absolutely, like, I can't even, I have to get something out and write a book. It's just, that's how much stuff's happened here where we live at. Um, When I was 12 years old, my dad and my mother were in here, and um, I was, you know, I was young then, and there was a humming sound for like 45 minutes and bringing me back to the ufo thing um but my dad said you know told my mom he says brenda i'm going to go on the front porch that's what that noise is and my dad's like does not believe in anything not even ghosts and um so when he walked outside me my mother you know i remember going out with him and looking to the left where that field's at and i remember seeing this big round circular thing that had lights all the way around it just hovering there and i'll never forget the look of that thing and, you know, he told my mother to bring me back into the house, and she did. And he told me for years that it was maybe military um, hovercraft or something, you know, them practicing or something like that. And, like, he kind of left it at that. Um, and he just really doesn't believe in anything, never did when I was younger, and um, still doesn't believe in anything like that. So I don't know if it's just that he doesn't believe. He just may not want to face reality. I don't have so, to believe that he's 81 does, years old. Oh, okay. So did he see this mm-hmm. uh, warp thing your husband caught on video or what? Which which one? The, the ball of light? Yeah, the ball of light or any of this evidence. The ball, that, of, the ball of light, he caught that on video. We have, like, a lot of video, a lot of pictures, a lot mm-hmm. of just a lot of stuff. Um, he caught that on, he has it on video, but... There was one night, I don't know, and I, this sounds crazy. I probably sound like a lunatic saying this, but um, he got to where, like, it was almost like it was drawing him down there. He was like, I'm going to go down there and check that out. And I'm thinking, no, you're not. You're not going down there. So I get in my car, and I'm like, okay, you're so, I have to go down there and see what it is. Because, mind you, he was in the Marine Corps, so, you know, he thinks he's, I guess, you know, could handle it. I don't know what he thought at that point in time, but... 
we went down there, and I was on live that night, too, on live stream, and I remember talking to people, and I it still showed that I was on live stream when I was going down there, mm-hmm. and just to see what it was, and, like, all of a sudden, I stopped the car, and I don't recall thinking or, like, you know, seeing that light anymore. It was it's so weird. Like, my mind just, like, kind of forgot, like, what actually happened, but I remember looking out the car window, and I had a flashlight in my hand, but I was looking back at my car, and all this smoke was rolling up from, like, around my car. It looked like, just like, if you've seen really dense fog, about two and a half to three foot in height, just rolling up from around the car. And um, so I told my husband, I was like, "There's the car's smoking. And I, after that happened, all I can remember was me, like, I was at this fire department, which is on the main road, like, like two blocks up. And I remember looking at my phone and I had seen, because my daughter, she was 12 at the time, and she was at a friend's house for the night. And all I can think of was like, oh my gosh, because I had seen where she tried to call me. Like, I went to this like major panic mode, like something's, you know, wrong with my kids, something's happened to my kids. So I'm trying to call her back and I'm pushing redial like over and over and over. And it's just, my phone just kept going beep, 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 beep. It would not let me call out. And I started panicking, so I flew back to the house. And when we got back here, we went to the front porch, went to sit down. I got back on live stream because I'm like, well, I lost everybody. And when I looked, it was 4 a.m. in the morning. It was literally like 12 o'clock when I was on live Mm -hmm. the first time. And I'm like, uh, because I had a girl that was from Canada that was watching me, and she's like, do you, you know, she's like, what happened to you guys? And I'm like, uh you were on live I thought but I lost you so I'm back now she's like do you realize it's 4 a.m. and I'm like uh no and um so I I really don't know what happened to us that night we kind of like think I know that sounds crazy but I don't know something happened to us um but there was a loss of time that night which was really strange um and so I I really don't have an answer because I don't know exactly I like I can only remember bits and pieces of you know that whole trip just to see that light and then that was it and um but there's been so much stuff happen here it's just i mean it's ridiculous the amount of stuff that's happened here um there was another night in particular after that that we were going you know and it was kind of like at this point i was like digging trying to figure out you know what's going on like you know here i am you can't pack your stuff and move away. You know, you can't just up and leave because, you know, nobody has the money just to, like, you know, move your whole household out of nowhere. Right. Um, but we were walking, or not walking, riding up. We were coming home. First we went, and we were going to the grocery store. We come home, and I told my husband, I was like, look up there in the sky. There's just like this big, it looked like a big planet. At first it looked like a planet. I'm like, is that a planet? I mean, it was orange. And he was like, oh, I think that might be the moon. I'm like, no, that's not the moon. I was like, what is that? And um, when we turned on our road and went up the road, there was a big orange white ball of light. And when we got up the, to the road and turned around and come back down by that field, this is no lie. I can put my hand on the Bible. This is the weirdest thing. But, like, we were sitting there watching this thing, and it turned into this huge, like, red, infrared ring of light. And it come down behind this tree and dissipated. And I'm like, and I'm sitting here now, like, stopped on the road watching this. And then after that happened, it was like the snap of your fingers and something like these. It looked like gigantic lightning bolts that were shooting out, like white and red from where that ring of light was across the wood line. And then, like, it was just like with an, like if you were to cut a light switch on, there was a triangular-shaped, like, it looked like red eyes. Like, they were, I don't know, I can't, I can't think about how exactly how many sets of eyes there was, but it they were in a triangle, and they were all, like, glowing red there was no it was you know we thought it might have been eye shine at first but it was all just you know they were glowing red and um it just like after that we seen those things in the triangle and i'm thinking i'm crazy like just sitting here looking at this stuff <laughs> yeah. but after that happened it was just like a snap of your finger again like that quick and it went from where they were at in a triangle these creatures i couldn't see their body just glowing like red eyes it, they were all in a line like an army, and these things started marching at us, and they were huge, and they were walking toward us, and like with every step, you could see their heads sway, 
like right to left, right to left. And there was two on the right-hand side that I was kind of like focusing on, which actually would be my left side, but they were on the right side of, I guess, if they were lined up coming toward us. But one took off and like was going toward that wooded area where we had seen them black, you know, ape-looking things run that day on live stream um, in the daytime. But one took off to that to that wood wooded section, and I was there and watched them take steps, and then another one took off. And when I, I told my husband, I was like, like, two just went, you know, that way. And he's like, said something about them flanking us. He's like, get out of here. And because we realized at that point in time, and or he did, I was kind of like drawn into this. But he realized, I mean, they had taken about six to eight footsteps. And they had gained, how many feet have they walked, Kurt? How, how fast? Yeah, it was like 100 yards within like 15 seconds. It was just ridiculous. And we left. I mean, it was just, it was just crazy. I, you know, and to think back at all the stuff that's happened, um, there was another night after that where um, we were up there and we're on the road. And again, we stopped, looked in the field with a flashlight, and I happened to look over in the woods, mm-hmm. and it looked like a sta- it looked like a stadium light in the woods like at a football field it was four squares of light and i was looking at it and i was like hmm what is that and i said kurt look at that you know there's something in the woods right there well this thing rose up like treetop level it come up about i would say to where it looked like it was about 20 foot up in the air above the trees and all of a sudden it looked like that one light split into two lights and then you know one light went behind the other just like in a row and these things were flying over and it went right above our car at treetop level, and they were these triangle-shaped crafts. Uh, they didn't have a center on them. They were hollow, and they had lights, um, you know, all like – it was almost if you like if you drew an arrow with, like, the tip of it, like, just like, you know, there was no center to it. It was just a triangle of light, and um, there was really no noise about them. It was just kind of like – you know, I guess you would say like thrust or, you know, just like a like a low, you know, sound. It wasn't anything loud at all, almost silent. Um, but it was very weird. Uh, that happened. Um, I've got a, been a lot. i got a question for you. Um, mm-hmm. That point where you were on your live stream, uh, you mentioned between midnight and 4 a.m. there was some time variance there. Can you go back and explain mm-hmm. that a little bit? What was going on? Did anybody notice any anything weird watching live stream? No, not that I know of. Um, you know, they recognized that, you know, obviously they were, they recognized that, you know, that what we were doing, uh, obviously we were going to see what that light was. And, um, you know, they didn't ever say, like, well, we've seen this. Because it to me it looked like that, they were still live and my video feed was active and there was people on there because it said live but everybody was gone and um you know obviously so when i you know got back and i was like hey guys i'm back you know sorry about that i lost you they were like what happened do you know it's 4 a.m and i'm like no and that that was the weirdest thing and you know i know what we were our intent was was you know my intent was was to get my husband to stop walking down the road toward this light. You know, I didn't want him going on foot down there um, without me or without, you know, being a vehicle. Like, we just feel, you know, more safe and secure um, because it had been there for a few nights. You know, I would say about five or six nights in a row in the same location, um, just kind of floating around. And uh, so I didn't want him going by himself. And, um, you know, when I went with him, that was our whole purpose you know was i was taking him and we were trying to see what this was so it could be like some closure to it and then um like i said when i rolled the window down and i we you know had the flashlight out there was nothing like noticeable besides i noticed there was smoke like or fog rolling up around the car and then um you know it was just kind of like my mind went blank after that and i woke like like almost like if you wake up somewhere but like like i really become like i guess conscious or whatever or like but i was more of like this big state of panic which was so weird 
and it was at the fire department. And I was like, you know, I don't really remember, like, all the details of, like, the drive there or anything. Um, I just remember looking on my phone, seeing my daughter had called, and I'm not really sure if, like, it was my subconscious mind knowing that all that stuff had happened here at the house or, you know, what was really going on that I was like, you know, something's after my kids, you know, is something wrong with my children, you know what I mean? Just like I had a lot of racing thoughts at that point in time. And to make it even worse, like I said, when I was trying to contact my daughter back mm-hmm. and I had seen she called, my phone wasn't allowing me to dial out. It was just like rapid beeps. It was just like I would push send and it was like beep, beep, send, beep, beep. And it was just doing it over and over and over. And I, I remember telling my husband, you know, something's wrong with Morgan, something's wrong with Morgan, my daughter. And I was like, I got to get back home to the kids. Something's wrong with the kids, you know. And it was the weirdest thing. It was so strange. And I don't know. Like, I still think something may have happened to us that night because, you know, I've, you know, I have, like, I try not to think of, like, you know, crazy stuff, but I have watched other, you know, things about, like, just all sorts of stuff, you know, just trying to, figure out like what's kind of going on you know if it's just you know around this area because you know we do live around UR. I didn't realize UR was like a big you know UFO Bigfoot sighting place um until this all happened either so um but you know there's just been so much that it would probably take me a lot to explain everything um I'll let you talk if you have any questions for me as far as uh, Anything else, or I've got a question. Let's go back to when your family was being, har- I'm, I'm guessing, harassed by whatever it was in the woods there, and mm-hmm. you said that your door was pushed in, and your mm-hmm. kids complained about something slapping the side of your house. Did any? Did it leave? Did you find any kind of physical uh, evidence that something like that happened? We have besides got a- pictures. Okay. Yeah, we've got pictures. Um, of I don't know whatever it was there was a, a muddy hand print on our brick foundation okay. um, it was near the end of the house near my son's room and there was something had wrote help us which was awkward very weird and if you look at the where it said help us on there the way it wrote it it had been like scratched in and we have um like a wood paneling what is that called Kurt the wood paneling on outside of our house it's wood paneling Okay, we have wood paneling on the outside of our house. It's, you know, painted, and um, the wood green pattern, I guess, runs vertical, not horizontal. Mm -hmm. But um, it had, the way it had wrote help us, and we've got pictures of this, would, for a human being to, or anybody, a child, an adult, anybody, to actually write that out, the way it had written it out, because it was almost like the H's where the lines crossed, it looked like it was connected to like other letters like for example like the h was connected to like the l or just say um a line of the e will be connected to like uh, the the u on the us and like somebody had to like whatever done that had to think it through or something while they were writing it which was it was very weird and I asked my kids, I was like, you know, you guys weren't outside, um, you know, doing anything. And it was off the ground a good way. I wouldn't even think they could even reach that without some type of ladder to get up there, like a step ladder or something or a bucket. So I, they didn't do it. Um, of course, we didn't do anything like that. But we seen that on the outside of the house. Um, back to our door getting pushed in, we were... At, we were we left to go to McDonald's that night, and um, we live in a small town, but left to go to McDonald's. And when we come back home, um, our front door during this time frame, it had been pushed in like two to three inches, and it actually busted the um, door frame where the um, where the the latch is. So that was very weird um and my son my oldest one he would hear things like knocking like if a person was knocking on the house um 
And then my, my children would say, well, I thought I heard you, and my husband's are stepdad, but they I thought I heard you and, you know, Kurt outside talking. It sounded just like you guys. Wow. And that started freaking me out because I'm like, you know, if something's, <clears> like, <throat> replicating our voices to try to, like, you know, draw my kids outside, that could not, that's not cool, you know? No, that is not and, cool. And um, then we have two outside dogs. One is on a 60-foot runner, and... Um, we have, he has been un like um, his uh, lead's been unhooked from his collar numerous times. Um, we you know he's gotten off, and we thought maybe it was you know you know he might have just done it by you know accident, kind of like the way he was like pulling or something. But there's really no way because you have to actually pull the latch back. And if it did happen that way once, you know maybe twice at most, I could see maybe like just by some weird coincidence but not numerous times like we had actually thought that he had broken his runner and you know every time that he's been you know off of it it's just like something went over there and like pulled his lever back and you know unhooked his lead it's just strange yeah we even got brand new latches on everything um like you know on his lead um extra ones it you know, we went, we've done a lot of stuff just to, like, kind of prevent. We've got cameras now at our house. We've mm-hmm. got night owls and um, the doorbell things. They yep. go off constantly. And, like, either there's nothing there or there's, like, orbs. Um, you know, we have a screen in porch in the back, and it looks like a, you know, a ball of light comes through the screen and goes back out the screen. And you know, it's, it's not a lightning bug or anything because obviously it wouldn't be able to do that, you know, because we right. screen, screen wire there. Um, but you know, there's just been like an extreme bit of things happen. I'm not sure if it's like I, like if there's like paranormal stuff happening here in combination with like UFO, in combination with like other stuff. But, you know, I've never really experienced anything to this degree. I know that right near our house, I can say that we live in the, our town is like very small, like the two towns that surround our house. And then we live in the outskirts in the country. Um, To kind of give a better description, um, there is, it's kind of like mountainous terrain or, you know, semi-mountainous terrain around here. Um, There is some flatland around here that people farm with and stuff like that. And we do have a, uh, a creek that runs to a main river that's near our home and a huge power line. Um, When I say the big power lines, like the ones that are like, you know, what are them, the big ones called, Kurt? I'm asking my husband what they're called. The big power lines? Are they just like high tension stuff? Is that what you call them? Yeah, they're really big power lines. Mm -hmm. Um, if If anybody knows George Workman on Facebook, like his profile picture, like he... He's with the um, with the uh, Bigfoot dogmen, things like that. But he has a picture. Um, his profile picture has a, a power line similar to that in the background. But it's just like a it's a big clearing where you know the state comes and they cut out the trees through there. And there's just huge power lines that run all the way from where we live to you know miles um, to the power station. So that's right next door through the woods from our house. And then that also that creek that runs to a main river that runs all the way from you know west to east. So um, we do have that here. Um, before all this stuff started happening to us, um, I do know that we two things we did that was different. Well, actually, three things that happened that was different than what they were before. Um, the first thing, you know, I've always been like an outdoor kind of person. Mm-hmm. Um, we started hiking. Uh, like I said, my husband was a Marine Corps. We started hiking just to kind of get, you know, I guess some alone time, you know, with kids and everything to that creek. And I haven't been there since I was a kid. Um, and we would look for crystals and rocks, arrowheads, things like that, just kind of like as a side hobby. And then um, we were down there right before this started happening and there was a footprint and um i drink the starbucks frappuccinos in the glass bottles Mm -hmm. um the vanilla um and there was a footprint down there and my husband he he looks for you know he's a avid hunter like he's 
you know, really smart with hunting and fishing and things like that. But we were looking around. There was, like, a small dog print, like, you know, probably was a coyote, I'm assuming. Um, And there was, like, this big footprint. Well, around that creek, the creek has a sandy-ish, you know, type of, you know, soil around it. So it's like a combination, some parts are clay, but most of it's sand around the um, perimeter of the creek itself. And um, where this, whatever it was, had landed, it looked like, at that point in time, it looked like a dinosaur hand. <laughs> it's all that I can explain or something that you would think of, it, like, not even realistic. Like, the imprint was just weird looking. Um, and I do have a photo of it, but... You could see where it had whatever it was, and my husband kind of pointed that out to me. It had landed, and the sand had, like, you know, kind of flung out from where it had stepped, landed, whatever. Um, and that was on the, like, in like right there at the bank. And there was another one that was, I would say, like, five or six foot from that one mm-hmm. to the right side. Um, but it wasn't as clear, but you could definitely see where something had stepped. At, like I said, this point in time, like, we didn't even have anything going on here that we were aware of other than him and I sat on the front porch at night. Um, you know, I, we, we would just enjoy being outside. I had my front porch had flowers all over on me as far as, like, my hanging baskets, things like that. And um, we just enjoyed sitting outside, getting night air, listening to music. And we got back home, and um, when the kids went to bed, whatever, that was just kind of our our moment to relax and um but we all i did was take a picture of it compared to my coffee bottle which was you know quite larger than my coffee bottle and um both both you know prints and we had come back and then all that stuff started happening to us here at the house that happened um we sort of sitting out like i said at the porch because it has sort of warming up like frequently every night just to get some you know peace and quiet from away from the kids and um enjoy the night air so we were outside like nightly and then um a neighbor of ours which you know he had been living here since i was a small child but there was you know pretty thick woods that separated our house from his um he had passed away and he was elderly he was in his um late 70s um Maybe it may have been 80 at this point in time when he passed away. Um, and he knew me since I was a small child. And so um, he passed away. But And then we were also had found a place in our backyard that was really abundant in quartz crystals. The whole time we were looking um, at the creek, we thought, well, you know, we were started digging our backyard by accident one day, and we ran into a quartz vein. And we were pulling out these huge, like, candle quartz, um, like, uh, cathedral quartz, you know, real clear crystal quartz rocks. And, um, but those were the only thing that was, like, different from anything else. So, I, you know, I really don't know, like, what happened. I have no idea. There was a time when I was young, too, that um, I was with a friend. I was about nine ten years old that um i used to walk up in front of our home down dirt roads there was a, a split level home there um this girl ended up living in florida with her family but i used to play with her a lot when i was growing up and there was a point in time where i had thought that i had been chased by like wild dogs my dad told me there were wild dogs but they were just you know i don't really recall a whole lot but we were walking to my house to the woods um kind of the same area of woods that we would travel to to that creek um me and my husband but we were walking um back to here and this i was i would say 11 12 but i know i knew that these dogs were chasing us and um but when i look back they were kind of like in a row they kind of looked at i guess on all fours like the size again i was young but maybe like a domesticated dog but they were you know just solid like dark in color i didn't really notice anything like you know out of the ordinary but i was young and it kind of i was really scared to be honest mm-hmm. with you. i ran just straight and all i know is i was looking over my shoulder i was running so fast i didn't even care about my friend at the point down which is awful but i did but um 
I, now that I look back and when I told my husband, I was like, you know, there was a weird thing that I think about now looking back. It was as soon as I got to the main road or to the road that goes, to, you know, our house sits on, as soon as I got out of those woods, like my feet hit that, hit the, hit the um, road, like I stopped running. And I'm like, that was weird because, you know, at that point in time when I was a child, I didn't think about it, you know. I was like, you know, you don't think about it. I guess I felt like I was in my safe zone. She come out behind me, and I was like, well, you know, we're fine. But now that I look back on it, you know, if there was these alleged wild dogs that were chasing us, these woods, like, why would we just stop at the road? You know what I mean? That's just strange. And, um, but... You know, there's been things happen, like I said, since I was a small child, all the way, you know, and not really a whole lot, but there's been paranormal stuff happen here when I was a small child. You know, just like I said, that thing that I seen, the UFO, I think it was UFO. I'm pretty dead set on it. It was something like that because it was just not natural um, at all. The wild dog incident and it could have been some type of dogs i don't know but i I can't verify it for positive but it was a weird experience um but just things like that then now that i've gotten older and my husband and myself are together i did have somebody ask me they said well you know has anything happened dramatically you know around your house and i was like well i know our neighbor died and then somebody asked us you know if, if they think that you know anybody was feeding anything around here and i'm like i don't think so i know that our neighbor that the older guy had a dog named tinkerbell and um it was a poodle and it's when you know me and my husband it's crazy as it sounds but we were literally like just searching for like answers like you know i didn't want to think like weird stuff worse stuff whatever but i was like searching for answers I, i was like i've got to do something this is just not okay but there was these two yellow, and we've got photos of all this, but, like, kind of, like, documenting everything, but that were left behind one of his buildings in the back of his, um, in the back of his yard after he passed away, these food bowls. And I know that, you know, certainly it couldn't be for his poodle inside of his house. And he also had trail cameras that was facing toward the woods that separated our house from his which was very awkward. Um, But, you know, I didn't get a chance to talk to him because he passed away, and I kind of regret, you know, not ever having the opportunity. But I do know that he often, for years, I thought the man was, like, kind of, like, off his rocker because he would always burn leaves um, in the woods. And he kept his woods, like, very, very spotless, like, every single day, he burned leaves and after leaf pile after stick pile and I'm like what is he like doing you can literally see you know 50 yards behind his house and the trees is just like I would see it when I was coming up our road and I was like this is just weird he's got like you you can it just there's a lot of brush here like and our woods get very thick in the summer you know and it was just cleared out all the way to his house and I'm like why is he you know burning like all these leaves and all these sticks like i thought the man just was maybe lonely or just you know maybe had a problem or something like you know ocd or something and now i'm wondering if it's because of you know all this stuff happening and i know i'm talking your head off but there's another there's another thing too that i was going to tell you that's weird we um we do have we have no houses to our right besides you know the one that i told you that the neighbor passed away that the woods separate to the left there's um two houses before you get to the field and a young which both of them you see my grandmother's houses before they were sold um my grandmother passed away well her, my grandfather passed away and my mom mother and father built her a house beside of our house on our property and then she passed away but they were both sold but anyway um a young girl had moved in during when all this stuff started happening, the yelling, um, you know, just everything, like a chain of events started happening. She was, a young girl and her husband had moved in because it's a one-bedroom house with one bathroom. And um, they had bought the house, moved in, and she came down here one day. And she was like, uh, have you had anything going on at your house? And I'm like, you know, I didn't want to really tell her 
you know, all the stuff that all the things that we had been experiencing. I thought she'd think we were crazy. But um, I'm like, well, you know, kind of, but not, you know, like a whole, whole lot. You know, I was just kind of like lying to her about it. And she, like, I'm like, well, what's going on? And she's like, well, that there's a utility closet that's in her carport. And I know this because my grandmother's house was. But um, she's like, um, something come in, broke into our utility closet last night. And she's like, it took everything in that closet and set it out in our driveway. But she's like, it, whoever done it didn't take anything. And I'm like... I'm like, really? And she's like, yeah. She's like, something come in the closet. And she's like, it was just so weird. She's like, it drug our grill out. It drug, um, I think it was like some car cleaning stuff they had in there and just different things and set it out in her driveway and did not, nothing was missing. And I was like, okay, that, well, I was like, I don't know. I was like, but we'll keep an eye out. You know, that's weird. And it didn't dawn on me, but we were sitting outside at night. I'm thinking, I hope she don't think that we done it because we didn't, you know. But um, right after that happened, we, um, our garage, we have a, a two-car garage that has garage doors, and something had came in there, and we had a uh, Scott speeder with some feet in it, and we had a uh, dresser in there where we had a yard sale, but we put the dresser back in there, and. Um, something come in there and had picked our the cedar up that had the uh the seed in it grass seed and slung it and it had landed on top of the dresser and all the seed was just everywhere i mean it just like something come here and just tore our garage up but you know it's so weird because i i don't we we don't think we hurt i didn't hear anything out of the ordinary which is that's strange like you think you would hear something you know what i mean right um I do know that she said another incident after that, and they have eventually got cameras too, but she was um, sleeping with her husband in the bed one night, and um, they were, she was, she works at the dentist's office, but she was asleep, and she said, you know, they keep all their lights off at night in their house, which I don't, but they do, and um, she said that something was like making noise so loud that it woke her and her husband up, and so he got his shotgun out, and he was going to go to the garage, you know, to see or the, the, where they were hearing the noise from to that door to see, you know, who was out there. They thought somebody was out there in their garage area. And um, he said he'd seen a shadow of, like, a human figure, but when he turned the light on, there was nothing there. But she said it scared her so bad because, you know, they were dead asleep and heard that. And, um, you know, I started going on. I, I, at that point, I kind of, like, told her, you know, more of like what was going on around here but she kind of looked at me like i was crazy to be honest with you and i which i wouldn't expect a different reaction because i would probably think the same thing too <laughs> but i mean it's just kind of you know i yeah you kind of don't know what to do at that point you're kind of like well you know but i didn't tell her like everything but i mean it's just i kind of you know told her that we've had a lot of stuff going on too but She's moved out. It's just her husband there now. So I don't know what's going on with him. Like, I got to a point in time where, like, we just kind of didn't talk anymore. Right. Um, it, they, she kind of, like, looked to me and my husband kind of, like, funny. Like, after, you know, I, I don't know. I really don't know how to explain. You know what I mean? But um, obviously we were outside more than her. I mean, we're older than her, too. I'm 40. My husband's 43. Um, and she's like 21, 22 years old, so um, it probably scared her, you know, even mentioning anything. But and if she had stuff like that going on, you know, I don't know how I'd feel either because I know that I was terrified after all this stuff was going on here. But um, yeah, there's just been so much, and there's a lot of things that I probably am like really not remembering to like bring up are missing but it's just been a whole bunch of stuff happening and it's not really went away um there's been things that's obviously changed it just kind of like seemed to go from one degree to another thing um but you know aside everything else like you know you would think that things will be a little bit different but there's really not a whole lot of difference here you know um i don't I kind of come to terms with myself. I know this sounds weird because it's not really the typical reaction of like a human, but I was like, well, 
if something was going to kill us or, you know, whatever, they could have already did whatever to us, you know what I mean? Um, however, I use my better sense of judgment. Like, I don't really go outside in the dark, like, a whole lot at all. Um, there's a lot of things I can't do now that I used to do, like go hiking without being terrified, like, around this area at least. Um, I can't really sit outside at night without, and, like, enjoy myself without having to worry about something happening because I don't know if and when it will happen again you know um because definitely whatever happened before was totally unexpected there's just you know I have to damper on like you know things I enjoy and but you know as far as like we don't really sit outside as much as we used to or even I try to, like, I don't want to say leave everything alone, but I don't really kind of, I'm not really interested or curious enough to really, like, want to, like, go on nightly rides to the field to see what something is anymore, you know. There is a lot, we do see a lot of um, UFO or um, UAP activity around here. Um, and when I say that, we do see a lot of that because we take our dogs out, the right. inside dogs out at nighttime to use the bathroom. But there's, when I say that, there's things that's like clearly not airplanes. Um, they don't have flashing lights. Well, what does there's your, something kind of do. But what's your animals? Do they react to any of this stuff that you you just yeah. spent the last little bit? Mm. What's the reaction to what and um, how do they react? My to it? outside dogs, you know, my outside dogs are weird. Like, you know, they kind of like, you know, when something's going on because they kind of like stay in their box and. If I go outside on a normal night to try to check on them, they usually, like, when they know that I'm outside or our floodlight comes on, they'll come out their box or they'll, you know, stand up to look at us and wag their tail. But there are certain nights where they will not move at all. And um, if, even if you have a flashlight, we have a really expensive flashlight, two of them, too, that are really bright. I forgot how many lumens they are. But um, now our inside dogs, we go outside and... There's some nights where it feels like, I can't describe it, it's like your ears feel like they're going to pop, um, like kind of like um, you're under pressure or something like that, your ears do, or you'll hear like a high ringing noise. It's almost like, um, it's just like, you know, if your ears were ringing, that happens. It's just an awkward feeling, but I know our dogs, we walk them on leashes, our inside dogs, and um, we have um been out there like numerous nights and it's all according to like it changes nightly but both of them um one is a a pit bull and he's a pretty big dog and the other one is a um english pointer um, about the size of a dalmatian um but uh they both like kind of hunch down and just kind of like stare like they're scared to death of whatever they could be looking across the road at the woods um they won't want to follow you at all like if you try to walk to like a location where them to use the bathroom they don't want to follow you and i try to like you know let them i try to watch for their body language you know what i mean i know that sounds crazy but i try to like watch for what they're doing because they're obviously probably can see or hear things that i can't and um but when you show a flashlight, uh, you know, at the, we've seen a lot of, like, eye shine before mm -hmm. um, in the woods. But there's not, there's some nights where they're looking at just, it looks like they're at a dead stare, like a dead stare or something. Um, but when you shine a light, there's nothing there. But it's just like they're terrified. And, um, you know, they kind of, like, do what they got to do and come back in. But, you know, there's some nights where just, like, statues just standing there. But they definitely, you know, whatever is around, it, it plays an effect on their behavior, you know, at nighttime here. And it feels like a lot of stuff that does happen, it happens more at night than it does during the day by far. Um, I don't know if, you know, that has any, you know, is related to what's going on. But I do know that it, to me, it seems like more happens at night than during the day. Wow. Um um, so, what? Uh, yeah, it's just... I got a, I got a question, a couple questions. Uh, do you okay. smell anything uh, different, like a bad foul odor or anything, when you see these eye shines or when you suspect there's something cryptid outside your house? 
we've smelled. I mean, I I don't know if they're related to whatever's there, but we've smelled like a like some like death here. Um, we've smelled, you know, things that smell like mildew. Like if you have like a lot of mildew on something, mm-hmm. it just smells like mildew or like a really strong skunk odor, um, like a skunk spray, but it could have been a skunk. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, but we there's a lot of like smells here. Um, this place is really humid here. Um, it's kind of like, I guess you would say, the lower elevation. Um, if there's like a mountain terrain, there's like it's kind of like at the bottom, kind of in a way, but it's really humid and um, here and like um, things like that. But yeah, there's a lot of haze here, like in the country area, so. A lot of times, like, odors will travel in the air, so you don't really know exactly where things are coming from. But there's a lot of weird smells, like, you know, here all the time. But um, I do know I have photos of, back to that mutilation with that cow, um, that was kind of creepy, that where I see I was watching you on there. Mm-hmm. Um, we were watching that, that video. But my where that field is, um, where I was talking about earlier, up our road um where it is now there is now like it's farm um farming for like you know crop growing and then uh i told you that that thing had come out of the sky there you know and then also when i was a child from the ufo in that area um but there is a like adjacent property like there's a dirt path that goes alongside of that field and there's a property that butts up to it there's a persimmon tree in there but there's it's fenced in with with bob wire and they used to have llamas there and then um after the llamas there was horses and um they they had goats and two horses there and um i would go up there like walking sometimes and like cross the fence and i would get the persimmons that were falling from the tree in the fall and uh, anyway my husband was up there one day um, and he was walking, and the goats that were in there were all dead. Like, he had pictures of them, and none of them had anything because, you know, he was a military police, like I said, in the Marine Corps, but he looked for signs of, like, maybe somebody shooting them, somebody killing them. There was no evidence of, like, any wounds. He's got pictures of them. And oddly, like, the way their legs were facing, like, one's, just say one and one goat was, laying with its legs facing like flat on its side with its legs facing to the right the very next goat was laying flat on its side with its legs facing to the left in like a weird pattern like that and there was like five of these things and there was one billy um so out of the five goats there was there was a billy goat and he was huge um they weren't miniature goats but um they were all dead and then they one or two of them had like orange spray paint on it like if somebody took a can of spray paint and just like sprayed like two dots of orange on it and um he took pictures well we went to um because that's the back side of the pasture i guess would you know you would say would be where you know the access road is beside the field so we went out to the main road and tried to we were in attempt to find the house that these owners of these goats and um we did and this girl um, come out. She was like a mid-aged lady, and she was over like, do you know your goats are dead? And she just kind of looked at us very weird, just weird looking. And, and she's like, yeah, I'm aware. And she was really quiet about it. She's like, um, we, uh, I think uh, she said our my lab had got a hold of them. And we pulled out of there, and we were like, are you serious right now? Like, there's no way that a lab would take down like five like huge goats when i say goats they're like weigh 200 or 300 pounds like there's just no they're not even like vicious animals Mm -hmm. and um i don't know what exactly happened to those goats but it's very weird how they all like none of their eyes were missing none of their body parts were missing they were all just laying there dead like no wounds anything um that was the weirdest thing like but then I was like, well, maybe the crazy lady, maybe she, like, poisoned them or something. But then, you know, you're thinking, well, how does she drag them up there and line them up like that? It was just so weird. Um, that, that is weird. weird. So how many uh, how many times then, did you see this? Um, that had happened, and then one of the horses had died at the same pasture, same area. 
And um, my husband's seen both of them. Like, you know, he has pictures. We called the um, the um, animal control one time thinking, you know, something like foul play was going on possibly. And, um, of course, we remained anonymous. But, I mean, I I was assumed they would went and talked to somebody there. But I don't really know, um, you know, what happened to them or anything like that. But it's just kind of you know and to think back like i don't know whatever happened to the llamas that were there or anything mm-hmm. else that they've had previously you know so um like it doesn't really neighbor our house that property it just neighbors like the field back there the back side of that that pasture and um my husband just happened to walk up one day and see all these goats laying there and he's like comes back and he's like look what happened at that field and i was like that's weird because I right next to where that happened in that first cemetery where they were laying is that tree that we seen that big infrared light come down from the sky that night and just dissipate. And um, that's just, I, I don't know, like, but she really looked at us weird that day. Like, she was either hiding something. And I know for a fact that a, a lab's not going to kill goats like that. They're just right. not. I mean, goats are pretty, you know, they can stand their ground when it comes to certain things. Um so, yeah, if they weigh that, what was it three or four hundred pounds? You'd think that uh, they would uh, definitely be able to defend themselves at least. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. So I, you know, I don't really know as far as what's going on here, or you know, like I said, my dog's playing with his toy. Um, like I said, when all this stuff started happening, you know, I was kind of, I was scared for my, you know. I was scared for my kid's life. I didn't know what was here. I was, like, you know, thinking it might have been a bear. Um, I was kind of, like, really in a state of, like, disbelief or, like, there has to be a logical explanation for this. You know, not that I'm crazy, like, normal. Like, I feel a logical explanation, like, something that's normal. (laughs) And then, like, I had no option at that point in time to, like, you know, after I pretty much canceled everything else out, like, to say, you know, they're – there's something here besides, you know, stuff that I'm used to. Mm-hmm. And um, something's definitely going on. And because um, it's like we were being terrorized kind of in a way. And I was like, then, you know, now who do I trust? You know, I didn't want people down here, like, you know, wandering our property, you know, researching all this stuff going on. You know, it's something you have to really think about because if, you don't make you make you know like a really quick decision without thinking it through um i just felt like it could turn bad or make something worse i didn't want to piss whatever here was like whatever is here off because people were coming around or just say like have people like here and just be exposed all over like the place you know somebody knowing where i live at or you know it can probably attract people that you don't want around. And then I thought, well, then, you know, you have the other side of it. Well, what if there is something here and then somebody knows about it that's higher up than, you know, me, and it's government-related, and, you know, I had them knocking on my door. You know what I mean? So there was just, like, a whole lot of stuff going on. And then in the meantime, I was just – all I wanted to do was, like, my, my children to be protected. That was my main – you know thing with my kids and um like i said we just couldn't pack our stuff and just leave you know Mm -hmm. um that that costs money so it's you know i've we've learned to live here but i'm very precautious now um and like i said i just use my better sense of judgment doing things when i didn't used to think that way um like I'm, I'm careful, and I just kind of know like where we're not to go and when we're not to be, <laughs> or you know, that's just what I do now. Um, so, you know, nothing's really bothered us that you know we know of at at the current time. Like not as it was like it was before with them, you know knocking on the house and trying to lure my children outside that was the worst so um i can imagine so um mm -hmm. did your kids actually want to go outside or curiosity or anything like that i had to my kids you know teenagers are hard to like well they were they were a little bit younger 
I have a 13, 14, and 18 year old now, but they were younger then. But they don't listen a lot of times, you know, even if it's something that's, you know, normal. You say, don't do it, they'll do the opposite. But I had to try to figure out how I was going to tell my children, like, there's something here. Like, you know, it's not mm-hmm. normal, it's not cool, like, there's something going on. And um, I had to eventually, you know, break down and tell them, you know, what was going on, but I didn't want to scare the life out of them either. But, um, yeah, they're very, they're, they're very precautious. Like, um, my older ones, as you know, like I said, when things are escalating and they were more aware, um, my, my middle one has seen eyes um, in his room at night. Uh, and he sleeps on the couch now in the living room. He won't sleep in his room anymore. Um, my daughter has had a bunch of stuff happen in her room. She's had, she said that one night when she, this was when she was younger, she said that three, she said they were, she called them angels, had lifted her off her bed and like just gently laid her back down. And I, you know, tried to have her describe like what they look like to me. Um, she said that she seen this thing near her, near her closet door that looked really sad. It kind of was like had its knees up to its head, like its head resting on its knees, like in a sitting position. And she said it looked really sad, but it was like um, white in color. And she said it had like a cone shaped head or something, but it was, you know, went to a point. But she said it looked really sad. She's like almost sad enough for me to go up and say, you know, what's wrong with with you? But she's like, I, I was also scared. But she's like, then I wasn't scared. And um, they were both in there. One, they were all three in that my daughter's room one day um, when they were younger. And so they had seen like, and this is before a lot of stuff really started kicking off here. But she, they said so they had all seen this little thing. They were under their bunk bed, and um, the very bottom that had the, the trundle pulled out. So it was in the daytime, it was dark under there, but they were all like sitting underneath the trundle where the trundle was like usually roll and go in. And there was, they said there was this white thing that looked like a small tornado is what it looked like, but it went around and touched like every one of my kids, like their leg and went out of the room. Like, you know, I guess it stayed near the floor, but it kind of swirled around and like touched their legs and then went out of the room. And then every one of them like witnessed it and felt it. And, um, I, you know, I was like, that's weird. Um, so they've had, you know, a lot of things, but they're not, um, they're not in, my oldest one has had like what he thinks what they would call sleep paralysis, but I'm not really sure what it is really. I don't really think that's what it is to be honest with you, but it's where you can kind of like, um, see and hear things around you but you can't move or speak yeah that's, that's sleep um, paralysis mm-hmm. he's had that happen a lot but he said that he's seen like dark hooded figures like near his closet um he says he just like he used to like kind of fight you know to try to wake up from it and mm-hmm. but now he just lets it happen um but i've had the same thing happen to me um my husband and myself had it happen to us at the same time simultaneously one night um, so that happened here, um, when my son was younger, my oldest one, um, he used, I, I didn't live here, you know, I moved out and away from home and then come back when my mother was sick with MS, but, um, to take care of her. But when I was, um, my son was, my oldest one was younger and my other two weren't born yet. Um, whenever he was in kindergarten, they put him on ADHD medication and um i took him off of it but and the reason why is because um he was seeing like indian heads um in our hallway bathroom um which you know it's my mother and father's was their house but he was seeing indian heads in their in the bathroom in the mirror and then in my dad's room and um or the master bedroom now but I don't know. I thought that he was maybe like having hallucinations off of it. So I had, you know, I had him rescreened for ADHD and come to find out he was not ADHD. So I'm not really, I don't really know if it was contributing or contributed from, you know, the medication or if it was something here he actually seen or, you know, what it was. So, um, but I do know that, like I said, you know, my kids, they don't really go outside at nighttime um, at all. And it's, you know, they just don't have an urge to go outside here. There's really nothing out here but wooded areas, you know, around our house. And it's 
it's pitch dark. So besides our, we have a um, light that we have put up, a pole light in our front yard, but um, that's all that's around here. So, wow. um But, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's... It's weird. It's some weird stuff. I mean, so, I, what's I'm the totally... what's the history of of the the land that your house is built on? Have you researched I'm that? I'm trying. Yeah, I've tried to figure it out. Um, my mother years ago, uh, you know, she tried to say that the house was built built near um, Indian burial grounds, but she's not really. I, you know, she wasn't really for sure about it. I didn't really even honestly get into details with her about it, or I'm not even really sure if she was, you know, kidding or serious at that point um but i do know that there is a what we have as our building was a old four-room house that was used to be across the road from our house back when this house was built in 79 and it was um it was put you know my dad had asked the guy who owned the property um that you know the house was sitting on if he could have it for a building and the guy was like sure so my dad when he built this house back in 79 he moved had that four-room house moved over to our property um and put on cinder blocks and um yeah it, it was built back in the back in the late 1800s that house was and i do know that the guy who brought the property that's across the street that's pretty much woodland um there was like a feud with him and another guy um, years ago over the name of this road. Um, one guy wanted to be, you know, I guess named after him. The other one wanted to be named after him. Um, and they had like a little dispute over it. And the guy never would sell. He still hasn't sold any of the property across the street from our house, the woodland. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why he's hanging on to it because you can't really, it's kind of illegal to hunt there because there's houses nearby. Um, it's not really prime for to build on because it's kind of like on a hillside very rocky um it's not really a good location to build so i'm not really sure why he won't let that go the land um i know that people have tried to buy you know like a half an acre or an acre or two acres and he will not sell like he will not sell for you know to anybody right wow that's impressive so um, I just really don't know, like, a whole lot. We've tried to look up or, you know, do research, and I just can't really find a whole lot, you know, on this area. So, um, you know, with, with you know, our our actual location or house so is on. So when is the last time you had any kind of uh, abnormal event happen at your place? Um. Listy, it's been about, I'm trying to think how many days ago it was. That old house, the same old house, there is electricity that goes to that house. Um, but there's a fuse box in the front that you can flip on and off, and it has the old screw-in fuses on it. Oh, yeah. And we have it just, we have it just for basically, like, you know, to, to house, like, our lawnmower and with the ramp in the back. And then um, the front's got boxes and things like that that, you know, stuff that we household items that we saved and um anyway the um we were in the backyard and um of our house and we noticed that the back light in that room that there's a each each room has like a just like i guess we would say a single fixture um place where you would screw a bulb in in the ceiling i guess what you call them just a single fixture and that's just for lighting in each room and those as far as i know my husband and myself have tried to get those back to to work for i couldn't tell you how long and they would never work um they had the pull chains Mm -hmm. all those pictures they like where you pull chain and the chain's actually gone on that that far left room and there's it's a four room house so it's a far left room the room the lawnmower's in which is the back right side room and um all of them are actually missing except uh one is there's one that's broken off about an inch in the front but anyway i looked over and i was like that light was on and i'm like my it scared my husband he was like what in the world you know we're like we're looking around like okay why is there a light on in the in the, the back of that house you know the of the building so he he thought there might have been somebody in there snooping around because you know things were getting bad with the economy and everything you know just we didn't know what was going on but 
there he didn't see anybody in there and we just kind of like shut the whole breaker off because recently we had changed the um the uh, fuses in it because the lights weren't working we couldn't get any of the lights work to work in there and the, the bulb that was screwed into that ceiling fixture was an is an old um kind of like spiral shaped bulb that's in there but it was on and we've never had been able to get that light on which is very weird and back to the light bulb thing this mm-hmm. may sound very strange um but where that orb thing was that my husband had followed that night or was going to follow that i took him to and all that stuff happened with the time loss and everything um there was a huge massive pile of light bulbs that were intact um they were not smoked up not burnt out just looked to be like new like the like well they have the leds now that are like kind of plastic light but like just like a regular standard light bulb will be like a 40 or 60 watt bulb Mm -hmm. and we have pictures of it but there was like a like kind of like i don't know why all these bulbs were there but there was like 20 bulbs just sitting there and um we would find golf balls like all around like this area like places where you would never think golf balls would be at it was so weird um in the woods just you know golf balls and i was like there has to be something to do with golf balls and light bulbs i don't know what it is but it's just like where you would never think golf balls would be at there would be trails of golf balls or the light bulb thing and then um there we have seen like to me out of this sounds crazy but uh quartz like quartz rocks like at the base of trees um we would find like a lot of blue objects like the color blue like whatever maybe lurking around like the color blue or something because there was always like blue pieces of fabric um i did speak to someone who was in the um in the cryptozoologist for that but they were you know i i started finding shoes like one or two shoes in the woods and it was kind of like creepy because i thought to myself you know why is there like shoes you know, just like in the woods, like kind of like in the, you know, just sitting there. I know that sounds crazy, but there was just kind of like I find shoes that were like under the soil or like they were sitting on top of the soil, and you know, I, I that was very weird. Um, I found a pair of little kids' cheerleading shoes um, in our wood line, like a pair of shoes for like a little girl that's cheerleading shoes, um, and. I don't know how they got there, but um, but there was uh, my neighbor. She had um, blue cloth. Like one day, it was like blue um, mesh, like a football jersey kind of mesh. It was there was a trail of blue football mesh fabric um, all the way through her backyard, and a big like long trail from the wood line through her backyard back into the wood line of like blue fabric. It's just like they're sort of of being like similarities and like some of these things like the light bulbs the the golf balls and the blue fabric and the blue stuff and um i don't know why i don't know um there's been a lot of structures we've seen here um and when i say structures like it it's it's really similar to stuff you would probably see on like colorado bigfoot or something like they were like clear structures not just a you know a few sticks here and there you know like um pretty big structures Mm-hmm. So uh, there's just a whole lot. I mean, it's just not just one thing, you know. So yeah, I don't really know if, like, things are, like I said, are connected. Like, if UFOs and, like, the Bigfoot, Dogman thing, paranormal are all connected or if, you know. So, so what would you say is the creatures that are around your property? one that was you know pushed your door in and smacked the side of your house is it a bigfoot is it a dog i don't know i don't know if they are the howls that we've heard um are they sound canine uh the growl that we heard sound like a demonic beast like something that unworldly like i can't even describe like something uh i don't know that you're probably seeing africa but with like evil intent so <laughs> um and then the things we have on the camera that look like apes they're not even that big like they're not even like there was one like big one that was sitting there my you know you can see 
it's, you know, kind of large. But the other things are about four, you know, four foot tall. What they, what they Kurt? Like four foot, three, four foot? Yeah, the ones that jumped. Yeah, they were like two, three, two to four feet. Um, so I don't know what they were. And then the things with the red glowing eyes that feel, I'm thinking they're like maybe like, you know, like uh, aliens or something. I don't know what they were. I don't know. It's like, like I said, it's just like a whole, you start to wonder if like, you know, the it's the paranormal side of it, the the UAP side of it, and then you have, you know, all this other stuff going on and trying to make everything like make sense mm -hmm. you know and i don't really know what they are if it's like a, a whole array of things just because there's like something here like a portal or just something weird here that's uh, some type of anomaly i don't know if it's you know one thing or something i'm missing or i, I really don't know um but clearly that video we have is like it's it's so with those things like running, those monkey looking things, you can definitely see them. There's no like discrepancy where you're like, oh, I'm not sure if that's it. You know, no, you can seriously see these things. It right. is the weirdest looking thing. There was somebody that had a video. Um, I don't know where it was, California or something that they were, I think, on a hike or something, and they caught something to that degree. And they, I think it was on the news actually. And the guy seen it in the tree, and, and it was really fast, and it was, you know, about the same height, everything. And um, But there was one of those, and they tried to say it may have been an escaped monkey from, like, a, a, a local or a zoo around the area may have been, but they weren't for certain. And there was nothing else that I, like, the story went dead. It's, like, the, the video footage she has looks very similar to what we have on video, but there are just more of them, what we have. When you saw and, um, the when you saw the eye shine, what color was the eye shine, or was it always on uh, video? Um, no, um, that we there was we've seen blue, we've seen um, like an amber color a lot, we've seen blue, and we've seen uh, like a red, and we've seen ones that change like almost like it's amber, then it goes red, or like it just changes color. We've seen a blue and a green before, but. Um, the two we had seen, there. I don't want to jump off topic, but anyway, but yeah, we've seen some that are blue, like straight eye shine without, you know, that dew. Um, now we have seen a lot of eyes that just were illuminated, which is very strange. Um, that you wouldn't even need if we thought they were eye shine until we took the flashlight down and you could still see them shining. And then we're like, um, <laughs> you know, so um, we've seen that. And um, this is another thing that's weird. That same place where those things were running, um, my husband and myself were out. Like, I was on my front porch one day, and my daughter and my husband were outside washing the car, and there was a tree that literally waved left or right um, at that same location where those we got those things on video um, running across the screen. But it looked like a big, tall tree, when I say tall, like 40, 30 to 40 foot in the air, just waving back and forth. And there was two that fell um, when my husband was out here by himself across from our house in the woods, just like he was out there. He's seen the trees just moving, and then they just fell, like back to back, um, things like that. Now, I'm not trying to jump off topic, but it just reminded me of those things happening. Mm -hmm. But, um, I, like I said, I don't really know. That's the that's the creepiest part, not knowing what these so things are or what they are. That uh, message that was written on the side of your house, and you tried to debunk it totally. What did it say? Help me or help us? Or it said help us. Okay. Yeah, help us. And at that point, I no, I didn't try to like write notes back to it. Nothing, nothing like that of that nature. At that point in time, I was terrified for my life you know i was like i don't know what's out here but um i don't care nothing about what you're wanting or what what's going on or anything else um but i kind of wish i would have like if i i don't know it sounds stupid to say but i wish i could figure out what's going on mm -hmm. um or what they do want or whatever's going on i don't know i know that sounds nuts so but how did they write it what what was the medium that they wrote it in was it chalk mud what 
Oh, uh, no. It was just like an, an, a scratch mark, like if something took a nail and, you know, used a good I mean, a, amount of pressure and then, like, engraved it into our, our wood paneling of our house. It is was it just still, scratched in. Is it still yeah, out it's there? it's still there. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, we've even painted over it, and you can still see it some. But because um, it's deep. I mean, it's a deep scratch. So that, you know, but I do, I didn't take a picture of it. But that handprint is like, it's still there on our foundation, on the brick. Because um, it was like clay, but it, the handprint's weird. Like the thumb of whatever did that, um, the handprint kind of looks short and like fat. Like the palm looks kind of fat and wide. And the thumb is really, really small compared to all the other fingers. Um, I guess the fingers will be, the handprint's about the size of, like, my hand, if you do a size comparison. Mm-hmm. But the fingers are, the, the thumb is significantly shorter than the rest of the fingers on whatever that was that done that. Um, uh, there's just a huge... Let me ask you a couple of questions about your general area. So if there are Bigfoot or Dogmen or whatever it is or both running around your area, what is there uh, locally that is naturally there to feed something like that? Oh, there's a lot of wildlife here. There's deer, like galore. Um, mm-hmm. We have deer. We have um, ponds. There's, you know, there's a lot of ponds that are naturally, I guess you would say, stock that are runoffs from farmland. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of farmland here that are, that vegetation grows on. But um, there's, there's, um, you know, of course, whenever my husband taught me this, but I didn't realize this how it worked. But um, whenever geese and stuff fly over, they ca- they can carry eggs from their, you know, their their feet to one pond to the other. So, um, you know, they're stocked with bass things like that um but there is abundance in deer um you know there's a lot of wildlife around here a lot i mean squirrels rabbit i mean i'm not sure if someone wants to want to live off the land you could definitely do it even a human uh you mentioned something about uh maybe having uh near indian land or are there any like uh indian burial mounds or anything like that yeah there's a lot of stuff around here like um there's stuff from the civil war like locations around here um that are just you know um i guess historical landmarks um there's mile markers that have things about like old mills and you know things like that's historical with the civil war and um there's just a lot of stuff around here that uh you know would be native american you know indian related Hmm. so uh Mm-hmm. Uh, or so American Indian. So you yeah. got paranormal, you got UFO, whatever that is that's floating around uh, your tree lines and uh, you know the orbs and stuff, and then you got uh, all this mm-hmm. cryptid stuff. Wow. So why do you yeah, stay? It's, why it's, do you guys stay there if it's so haunted? So I whatever. Don't, I don't really know. That's it's just so weird like because I, I i wanted to leave like and there's times where like i kind of do but then i like i feel i don't know i just feel like i i think a part of it is because it's my childhood home and i've lived here since i was small mm-hmm. and then all this stuff kind of started happening and it's like i kind of want to like don't want to let go um my dad is 81 and i'm still taking care of him and so i can't really leave him because he's not in really good health um, and we can't just pack up and leave either, but, you know, there's just, and even if he did pass away, I, I don't know if I would want to, you know, you don't really want to sell a property that kind of you grew up at, you know, um, and nothing, like I said, it's, you get kind of like to a point to where it's, I don't know, I know this sounds weird, but like, you don't want to, it's like you want, I don't want to miss stuff either. Like I'm thinking, well, you know whatever's there you know obviously i've I've probably maybe been around since i was small and you know if you can't go back or you know what i mean it's you'll wonder if you're gonna miss it or or miss and there's nothing like exciting about it really there's not it's kind of like it's kind of like eerie scary 
But, um, and nothing's happened to us, but I, I really don't understand, to be honest with you. I can't, I don't have a logical explanation for that. That's just a good question. I even wonder myself, like, you know, well, if we leave or whatever, or, you know, how am I going to feel about that, you know, or if I can ever go back. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I know that sounds very weird to say or very just not normal to say, but, you know, I often wonder, like, maybe whatever's here, like, there's just a reason and maybe, like, humans just don't know or maybe that they've been there for, like, ever and I, I don't know how to how to explain it, I guess. I know that sounds crazy, but I don't. So the, uh, here's an interesting question from uh, Miss Nobody in Florida. Uh, does it feel like home there? Yeah, it does. I mean, okay. I can, I've can. i always been able to do this when I come home. Um, like, I, this place has a certain, certain scent to it, and, I, and I'm telling you, it's the truth. And it's so weird. I remember when I was younger, we would go to the beach, which was like three hours away from here, um, Myrtle Beach. And I, I could be a dead asleep. I can go with my eyes closed right now to like just say 30 to 45 minutes away from here and I know when I'm home because there's a certain smell to this property to this location as soon as you bottom the hill on the main road to turn right on our road you can there's a smell to the air and it smells like home like it just I, I don't I can't describe that yeah um okay. It, but I remember when I was a kid, like, you know, I could do the same thing. I could just smell that I was around the house. Like, you know, I'd be asleep in the back seat. We'd be on a beach trip home, and, like, as soon as we pulled in, like, I knew I was home. I, like, woke up. Like, you know, I, I can just tell that I'm here. Um, it does feel like home, but it kind of, like, it's not the same as far as, like, I really, I would never be able to, like, walk out around here and I'm I probably going to apply to everywhere but especially here where I know there's something because I'm not an overthinker either um but and feel safe anymore just like at hiking or you know when I was a teenager we used to camp and things like that nothing bothered me when we were younger um I can't recall seeing anything crazy or anything happening um but I don't think I could ever do that again as far as, like, being outside at nighttime, um, no matter where I am, but especially here. Um, even with a weapon, I really don't think. Like, I know for a fact if I had a gun or my husband was armed, we were both armed, I would not feel safe around here because, one, I do not know what I'm up against. I don't know what they are, what it is, if it's something I could even kill. Um, which is a problem, a concern, um, and then, you know, that that's that's the issue. Like I don't know what they're capable of, um, what it is, if it can be killed, if it's a flesh and blood creature, have if they, it's something that's not. Have they been aggressive, <laughs> violent, anything other than that? Uh, well, that's not really violent. Help us. That growl. Violent. I don't know what that growl was, but it really sounded, it, it was, it was, it uh, was, that growl was something trying to, um, it, it was definitely putting off a threat, like, you know, like, it wanted us to feel threatened, like, really. Um, it wasn't anything nice at all. It was like something from the, the gates of hell, whatever the growl was. I, I can't, and my husband's not, I, I, I feel like I'm speaking for him, he's sitting right here beside me, but he's not. The, the scared um, individual that would be like, oh, you know, or, you know, but he, he it terrified him and me both. Mm -hmm. I have never, I, you know, when you watch movies, you're like horror movies, or, or and I'm not even really a horror movie watcher, but um, when you see people that, you know, kind of fall and they fall when they're running um, and then can't speak and crying and can't even get out of a sentence because they're terrified, that's how it was, literally. Um, I, that that was I have never been more scared in my life ever ever than that and I can't even describe what that do you want to explain what that growl sounded like 
Hang on, let me put you on speaker so he can explain it. Sure. Hang on. Go ahead. Draw across the room. Yeah. I don't know, like a is a mix between a lion, like <laughs> as loud as a lion roars. I mean, I, I was at I, I worked at a zoo for a little while, and they had a male lion, and he he would sit there and roar like every morning, and you could feel it in your chest even if you're like 50 to 100 yards away, and whatever growled that night, I had a machete in my hand, and like, I, I just ran instantly because it was like so deep and loud, and it wasn't a bear, like bears make a totally different noise, I mean... Whatever it was, you can feel it in your body, like, in this instant fear. And, like, she was behind me about 20 feet, and, like, we both, like, ran instantly, like, not even thinking. Like, <laughs> and she even fell, like, when we got to the top of the driveway. And, I mean, I've never heard nothing like that ever, and I've hunted my whole life, been in the woods everywhere, Colorado, all over Pennsylvania. And I, I just never, ever heard the sound like that and felt nothing, like, with that intensity. And yeah. we have on audio, too. Um, one night, I was sitting, she went in the house. I sat on the porch that night. It was just real nice out. And she went in the side, and I had a hearing app with a portable speaker. And I had my a phone, like, about 10 feet in, in a tree where it wired off, and I could barely get the phone up there. And, like, I could barely reach. And it picks up some sounds, like, around and stuff. And it, we listened to the speaker well. She went in the house or something. And I heard something. This is when there was still woods on the right side of her house. And now they're building a house there. But I heard something coming through the woods, like, start, like just making all kinds of ruckus. And, I, I mean, I've heard deer before a million times. But anyway, like, I didn't see nothing. And... On the hearing app, I heard something like puffing, like really hard breathing. And like I came in the house really quick, like and shut the door. And I'm like, listen to this. And whatever it was was like right under this phone. And we're looking where the phone's at. It was lit up and everything and could not see what it was. And at that time, there used to be an owl that used to come here. And, like, it would just look at you, like, and let you get within, like, 10 feet of it and just mm -hmm. look at you. And that night, that owl kept landing, like, to the right on a, where we had bird feeders. And it would sit there, and it would take off. And you can hear it on the hearing app where it would take off. You hear the bird feeders, like, rock. But this thing, like, came and was breathing, like, so, like, deep. You can just hear its lungs. And it would make this weird high pitch like snort kind of but not like a deer it was like a yell and like a snort possible, mix i wonder if it's possible to play like two or three recordings of it like i, I probably could pull it up okay oh, if you'd like to uh got a, got a question for you guys don from the chat wants to know uh what were you doing when when you heard that growl or growls and was there a weapon around i had a machete yeah in my hand. we were okay that was during the time where that orb was that and he was and kept he kept looking at it. it had been there for like i said four or five days yeah, um it was there for a couple of days it, i thought and, it was somebody with like like a, a their cell phone light on or like a lantern and it just that's what it looked like from far because it kind of had that color like maybe of a phone but not to the really bright white it was kind of a more yellowish light it wasn't orange it was between like a yellow and a white and it wasn't super bright but you can see it clearly and it was like a couple of feet off and it looked the size of a basketball and like i just kept wondering like is that somebody down in our woods and that's not like typically any where anybody would be anyway but like we were walking down because i kept looking i was going to walk down to see to get a better look and i had a spotlight and i cannot get a good like beam of light onto that light or around it to see so i was curious and she kept walking down behind me and she actually had her back to me looking up in the sky over our house at and a I thing was in the lie. sky and yeah. she's like as soon as she, 
that thing, there's a, that other thing, I don't, it used to ha- like make the weirdest yells, and it does it about once a month, and it's not a dog. If it's a dog, it's seriously like the size of a bear. Just the loudness and the tone. It's not like any coyote, wolf, or dog that I've ever heard. And we know every dog in this general whole area. And it, it seems like it does it about once a month. That it'll make these weird yells uh, like for about five, six days in a row. And that thing was over there yelling. And she went to say, I can't get this thing on video, that thing in the sky over the house. And as soon as she said that, whatever was in front of me, I, it was like probably only 20 feet in front yeah, of me and I'm across say, the road. And it literally, like, I didn't even have to think. Like, just my reaction was, like, turn around and run. And, and what I was so scary about it, like, he wasn't even out of our driveway. Like, he was about... I would say, because I, I mean, I had watched him. He was standing at the edge of our driveway looking at that ball of light down the road in the woods. Mm-hmm. And you know, it was just like, it, to me, it was like something was there, like just like he, like curiosity kills the cat, that kind of thing. Like just knowing that, like he was intrigued by it and just wanted to pull him in down there. And I was like determined, like, okay, you're not walking down there. Whatever, but he was wanting to try to, you know, get video footage of that light, but, you know, he couldn't really get good focus on it because it was moving, like, at a constant, you know, it looked from where we were at, and this thing was, like, 200 yards away, that it was just kind of, like, you know, there, but moving slightly, but if you look through, like, your camera or anything, like, it was, like, at a constant, like, rotation, um, you know, moving in, like, circular motions or, like, up and down, back and forth, like, floating, and he was determined to, like, see what that was. And, you know, there was nights where he, you know, thought he was recording this thing and it wouldn't record, but he does have it on video, um, some of it. But he was doing that, and he was in our driveway. I was up near the well house. So I was about 10 foot from him up in our driveway. Um, and I looked around at the sky, and I was on live that night because I went live. I don't know what it was about going live, but, like, I – ended up, like I said, creating, like, a private closed group on my Facebook. I didn't want anybody from around my area to know, you know, I had a group open. I didn't want anybody, like, being able to join my group and not having permission. Like, they literally had to send me a friend request and request to join that group, or I had to request them to join because it was totally private. Mm -hmm. But I had, like, 20 people in there that, you know, believed in Bigfoot and things like that. And... I know they were really trustworthy people, and I would go live, like, every night and just, you know, they didn't know where I lived, didn't know my location, didn't know, they knew what state I lived in, that's it. I didn't give out details of anything like that, but I would go in there, and I just felt more secure knowing that there was somebody there to witness it if something happened to me. I know that sounds bizarre, but all I literally said was I was on live, I lifted the phone up, and I said, for some reason, I cannot get these things on video because I could see this thing in the sky with my eyes, but I could not get it to, you know, show up on, on the camera, on the phone, where they could see anything. And as soon as I said that, that thing growled, and it was like a monster. I mean, I can't even, like, it, when it growled, it, ended up like it you know it was just like like a roar like just like intensive like like whole body vibration roar and then like as it was like i guess exhaling it was just kind of like what a tiger or a lion would do um there's there's a a term for that but i can't just think of it right now off the top of my head um uh, it's not a purr it's uh it's where their voice kind of like oh like that kind of like keeps rolling on like but just like yeah you know, rattles Okay. But did, it you, was did you feel strange. it in the chest or anything you know, when it growled? Our whole body. Like, our yeah. whole body. I yeah. mean, you would think, when I turned around, you would think that, like, whatever was there would be right behind you. Like, you, would, I, I thought that I was, it was just like an instantaneous, as soon as I heard it, like, my you whole body vibrated, and running. I took, a, I, I turned around to my right just to, just, I guess, out of instinct to see like what was there and I ran and I didn't see anything because I thought that whatever this 
I guess just out of human instinct that this thing was going to be right behind me, and I ran. And then my husband, where our sidewalk is, we have a um, a uh, concrete sidewalk and a patio that goes into our. We have a gravel drive that goes into our garage, and our gravel driveway is not but like 20. Well, let's see, about 60 foot long. And um, as soon as we got to that pad, I stopped and I folded over and I was crying and I could not even speak. I'm like, what was that? And I couldn't even talk. I want to wow. see if you can. I don't know if you can hear these recordings. If you can, okay. There's a, a bark Let me know. All right. Um, if it's too loud, then you can. Um, the dog barking in the background. Our dog barks. There's one dog that's kind of barking a little bit in the background. Is our dog, like my husband said. And there's the thing that's howling. Um, that's the thing that he was saying that does it kind of consistent. Holy cow.
Okay, I'm gonna stop for playing. <laughs> <laughs> wow! So if you, but, um, ha, ha, that's ha, just uh, that was just like one incident of like, I mean, if there was this thing in there that was like, <clears throat> like just massive. That was some of that thing that growled at us that night. Um, so and then you were, there was that thing that yells. Yeah. So were you holding the recorder, or was this a recorder you left out? No, that was just a telephone. We had. We had um, that sitting in our Bradford pear tree, like in the front of the house, which is about, like my husband had it sitting in a branch that um, kind of veed off in the very front of the house beside of our bird feeder. Um, and we had that. It was just a, a telephone sitting there. And then we had it Bluetoothed to a, um, um, our YouTube boom, which is a regular speaker. And I had walked inside to get a coffee. And um, mm -hmm. my one of my frappuccinos, my iced coffees, and like before I could get outside, he was in the house. And you're still on speakerphone, by the way. Um, so that's when he was explaining to you that like he was outside and that he heard something. Tell him again, so you know exactly that you heard something. Oh, uh, yeah. We used to, <clears throat> like I said, we used to have uh, about an acre or two acres of woods on the right side until the next house that they cut down. Uh, last July, and th they just built a new house there. But anyway, I was out there waiting for her to come back, and it was pretty quiet that night. Um, and I heard something rustling through the woods, and I didn't see nothing to the right of me. And we have pretty good lighting out there. We have two, like, 100-watt lights on our porch and our, pole light, our post light in, by the driveway, and it's black other than that. We have a street light in our yard actually like other than that it's pitch black and i heard something come like really fast like and i looked 
to my right, didn't see nothing, and on the speaker that was picking up the sounds from my phone, the phone was like the microphone, like I can hear something like breathing, like panting and huffing, and I heard up and stepped in the house, and I usually don't do that, and sure. when I came inside, I was looking through the little window beside the door, and I was hit record, and whatever it was, like, sound like it got right up underneath and was, like, trying to get the phone or something, yeah, but I could not morning, see whatever it was. It, like, my the front yard's lit up. And like, it's so weird it because, just, like, we, you know, we were sitting there and, like, we were in the front of the front room of the house and we're looking out there where that phone was at in that tree. And we the only thing that kept happening was this owl, this owl. It was the weirdest thing, this owl. It was a barn owl kept coming up like nightly out there and it would land on that bird feeder beside that tree where the phone was sitting and I could literally almost walk like six to eight foot away from this owl and he would just sit there and look mm. at me and he wouldn't fly away or anything um but if he would fly off and come back and he started coming around and I thought well I even got video of this owl too but um Kurt was out there but he come in and we're sitting here listening to this on the speaker because, you know, we have Bluetooth our phone and the speaker together. The phone was out there, the speaker was in our hands in the house and we could hear this thing and it sounded like it was trying to get to our phone or piss because it couldn't stop I guess maybe our phone from recording. I don't know what it was doing, but then it sounded like that was fighting with something. Like you can hear more than one thing, definitely. But the thing that you can hear that's kind of grunting or making the deep, like, grunts, um, it sounds like it was pissed, like, like okay, like, this phone's recording me or something. I, I don't really know what to think of it. I don't know, but um, the, the phone that was recording the whole time in the tree is actually only, like, maybe it was a 15 phone. feet away from the house, and the woods are... You know, probably another 80 feet one way and another about 50, 60 feet to the right. So, I mean, this is like right in front of our house, like like 15 feet off our sidewalk. So it's not even in the woods or anything. Like so many things happen. We were up at the field. One of the first instances of all this, like we was going to go to a Walmart one night. We had... Our daughter, and she was, I think, like, what, eight at the time? It's like four years ago, three or four years ago, before any of this other crazy stuff happened. We went, and it's a dead-end road. We turned around, came back, and I shined a flashlight, didn't see nothing. Well, it's pretty flat. There's no valleys up there or anything. This big field, and they plant corn and um, shorgum, soy gum, or short, it was sorghum or whatever, and soybean just alternates, but... Anyway, I was just messing around, never thought about any kind of anything like this or anything. So I, I whistled, like never do it. I just happened to go, and something whistled instantly back. And I was like, told my wife, I was like, wow, I can hear an echo. And she's like, what are you talking about, echo? She's like, you can't hear an echo. And I did it again, and then nothing. And then, like, I just happened to go, like, I want something like, or a whoop or something like that and instantly something yelled back like instantly loud as hell and our daughter started crying she's like go 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 and like this is a place where nobody's going to be camping no one's going to be at this was like eight or nine o'clock at night pitch black and it was like crazy because like almost instantly even if a human was there they couldn't respond fast enough to to do that like it, it was like almost instantly as soon as i yelled it yelled right back and like she just drove off and our, our daughter was crying and she's like go 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 mom go and it just kind of freaked me out and then all this other stuff just so much stuff's happened i mean like I, I would have to sit down and think and think and think because i mean there's been times where we'd go up that field and stop just to look for deer or whatever because that's originally why we started going up there because a lot of times i would use a spotlight and look at deer mm -hmm. and and then all this other stuff started happening after that but like there's so many times we're up there and there's another field about a mile away from here and we'd seen some crazy stuff up there too but for some reason it looked like car brake lights about maybe 10 feet off the ground there's 
the woods start on the other side of this field about 500 yards. And this happened at least four or five times at that spot that I can remember. And about 10 to 15 feet off the ground of my view, two red lights, sometimes one, would just light up out of nowhere and they'd be moving like super fast. And it, you'd see them like lit up and they'd always go from left to right, lit up and they would go maybe 30 to 50 yards and like, but going like 100 miles an hour, like light up, boom, and just kind of like fade out, gone. And nothing could go through them trees like that. I mean, it's just full of trees, big oak trees and everything else. So I don't know what that is. I mean, we see so much stuff. It's just hard, like, to just the uh, talking right now. There's but no explanation because we don't even drink alcohol. That's so <laughs> no, weird. we don't drink. Like, we don't, we don't smoke do pot, nothing. We, <laughs> we smoke cigarettes. We smoke cigarettes. I drink my coffee, but we don't even drink alcohol. And that's the bizarre thing is, like, we're not – I know I'm not hallucinating, and – my husband's not we're not crazy like we're not intoxicated when we're seeing things like this um anything it's just it's very i don't know how to explain you know and and when i say like i i was the one who was like when this first year happened i was like you know there was literally and i have photos but there was a tunnel like when i say a tunnel it wasn't just like it was like a woven tunnel of like just like if you took a like hundreds of branches and like wove them um it was all on the ground on the sides like like built walls on the ground right beside of our house in the back where that thing yelled um that night we had the dogs out so woo like a guy at a football game hyped up and i looked around thinking there was a human in my yard and i realized there wasn't somebody but it was back there and it went in and curved around and there was this thing that was like a gigantic if anybody has ever seen like a hand-woven basket Um, It looked like a huge nest, like something like an ostrich would sit in, like a nest. And I'm like, it was the weirdest. There was a bag of um, chicken leg quarters, but there was nothing in the bag, like what chicken leg quarters would come in um, that used to be like $5 or $6 per bag that has like the thigh and the leg that's, you know, one solid piece. But there was like food products that like something was dragging that in that location. But at this time, I was like, you know, I was this person who did not believe in anything but what was, like, known, you know, or what I knew or seemed logical. Like, I was like, there has to be an explanation. I'm asking my husband, do deer do this? Do bear do this? Uh, Do we, you know, mountain lions? Like, and we don't even live in an area that has bear or there might be black bear a little far west of us. Um, on up in the more mountainous terrain, but, you know, I'm thinking of, like, all possibilities, and I could not, it it just would not, nothing I would think of would make any sense. I mean, I had literally no options but to turn to the more, um, you know, things that was beyond my comfort zone, like, you know, the paranormal, the Bigfoot, you know, Dogman, and, and, and when I say dog, man, when I first, my husband laughs now, but, like, I had people messaging me saying, you know, I think you might have, like, a dog man at your house. Because when I was on these lives, people would say, your tree looks like it's alive in your front yard. And I'm like, what the hell are they saying? I'm like, I don't see nothing. But they were sending me screenshots, and I'm like, I don't see anything. But, you know, people were saying, well, maybe you have, I think you have dog man. And I was like, okay, now, like, I've done turn to Bigfoot, but now sure. you're saying dog man? I'm like, that's that. like, uh, okay, it's getting too far. But now that I look back at things, like, I'm not even really, like, I'm not, you know, opposed to, like, being open-minded anymore because of all that's happened. You know, it's, like, opened my mind to the, the what-ifs or, you know, and I'm not, you know, when I was really close-minded to all this stuff, and and the difference is like we don't really want to be like known and I don't, don't want, want people too, like you know? yeah like us sharing like our stuff and but I mean like everything we say that if we have video for we say we we actually seen it or got video for yeah, like I don't care about attention I don't I'm not one of them people like I totally laughed at her like when she started saying about Bigfoot when all this started happening and like because she didn't believe in none of that either and 
I totally was like, all right, okay. I mean, that's a little far-fetched. So she did. She looked at every kind of bear, every signs of bear, signs of mountain lions. And, and like, I know of all, and we there's even big claw marks on this tree that we found that we used to walk in the woods. And there's a tree down that I found, and it has claw marks on it, but they're not the claw marks of a mountain lion, a bobcat, and they're not wide enough, really, to be a bear. Like, bears leave really wide gouges, and they're the weirdest scratch marks, and they're probably, I don't know, like, maybe seven, eight feet in, up in the tree, and it just... I've seen bear scrapes on trees, like, a lot. And I know bobcats make crazy sounds, too. But, like I said, I'm pretty knowledgeable with the woods. I know almost every animal. <laughs> I was, like, a National Geographic nerd growing up. And I know there's birds at night and um, everything. And, like, I wish I knew what makes these sounds and stuff like that. It took a long time time for me to be able to walk our dogs in the dark down by where that thing growled because like it just such that thing was so loud that growled at us like it just you, even if you had a gun like I don't think it so. probably wouldn't stop it even grizzlies are hard to stop this thing was seriously like the audio is hard because what we play is I played it just off my phone right no speaker nothing and even that, even if you played it on the speaker, it still does not justify the intensity of the noises that they actually made. They just can't pick up the frequency like you can hear in real life and the feeling. Even that thing across that was howling in the background, making that weird noise, a lot of times it'll yell so loud you can almost feel it in the air. And I'd like to know what that is that thing that's like moaning in the background and it, it's weird because it's almost once a month it does that and when it does that sometimes all the dogs around the whole valley will all start barking out of nowhere and the dogs around here usually don't bark unless something like happens but it's so weird because all the dogs will be barking at one time like going crazy and it's like somebody like takes a light switch and just shuts them off they all stop instantly like every dog at and one time just stops it, there's, it, it's almost i'm not sure if they're like in our area or if they are neighboring dogs because it's almost like they sound like a pack of coyotes or coats um we hear those a lot i've heard them my whole life um it's almost like a pack of like yiping coyotes but like when they get to a certain spot and it's directly across from us in these like dense woods it's almost when they're 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 howling and carrying on it's like when they stop stop it's like he said it's like taking a light switch and cutting it off not one whimpers after it not one howl after it nothing it's just gone um it's strange because it's not natural I mean, even if dogs howl together or coyote, a wolf, like a wolf pack or anything, you know, when the alpha or whatever is going on there, you know, when the one stops, you'll you'll still hear like some time to time. I mean, it's just like it's just like a sudden like gone. I can't describe. It just don't make sense. Um, a lot of things don't make sense around here, but and holy cow, yeah. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys where we live, but I'll just we say we're in Uari. central North Carolina. <laughs> Uari is like 30 About minutes 30, from not, us. And I didn't even know Uari had like all these like things going on with Bigfoot and like such a place until she got into all this and um, then research. And then we see like Uari is like one of the biggest hot spots for like activities with like Bigfoot, UFOs, like and researchers. And I worked with a guy when all this started happening, and I, I was talking to him just about a couple things that happened, and he was telling me some stuff that happened to him at URI with people that was out there that looked like military, but I'm pretty sure they're not military because I was military, and they're not really doing what he said they were doing. But anyway, I didn't even want to <laughs> talk on this thing. I 
wonder if she called. That's all her, but I was yeah. just trying to get my, my two cents. It kind of feels good to, like, be able to talk without having to, like, I guess. We don't even tell people we know because I don't, don't want to feel like I'm some. Crazy. Kind of, yeah, or like some tweaker, like, oh, they're, they're twacked out on something or they're psychotic. So. I mean, oh, it's, no. it's a, a awful feeling, like, kind of like, you know. Because I would think somebody's, like, crazy or just, like, pulling my leg. Like, if somebody just randomly, like, oh, yeah, this happened to I mean, me and bizarre. all this crazy yell, I mean, I'm like, really okay, you, you need help or. You know, if if I had never experienced this, I would seriously think that, like, if somebody was talking to me, I'd be like, oh, okay, like, you know. But well, I, that, I really like. That audio, I would uh, definitely be upgrading whatever I had as a lead projectile <laughs> thrower. Yeah, I'll, and 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 the crazy thing is, uh, I don't try to blast all of our business, but the crazy thing is, is like we don't even have a firearm in our house, mm-hmm. um, which is sound. We have a twenty-two. Um, what is it? Oh, uh, a pellet it's gun. a pellet gun, oh, but I mean, it's what we got our son one year for I have Christmas. A bunch, but I don't have yeah, my all my husband's guns are up north with his brother, um, and you know, it, it's just kind of like, you know, when all this happened, we had like two machetes. Of course, we have shovels and things like that. But I mean, and honest to God, like I even told him, you know, I mean, I can go to my brother's house and grab it. We had we had done that one time. We grabbed when this was going on, like the the most intense things. We, I got my brother's shotgun, but even if we were both armed, I really don't think, I'm pretty much certain that I would either not be able to kill these things or it would not stop them or it or whatever. Like, even if, you know, and I even told him at one point, and I know this sounds nuts, but I'm like, you know, your mind has a lot going on when you hear something that's totally out of the norm. And first, like I told you, I was scared to like for my kids. Um, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what I was up against. I didn't know what was here. I didn't know if I could kill something, if it was going to kill me or my children, if it was going to come in our house, what they're capable of, if they can. I mean, you don't never know. And then I'm like, you know, there's just a whole a whole array of things and then you're thinking well you don't want to cause more attention on yourself i don't want people walking around my property mm-hmm. i don't want like the government to be involved and then you start thinking well now what if you are to pull out a gun is it going to piss whatever it is off and then they're going to come after you with like the vengeance like 20 deep or you know or more and like or just even one and, and make it mad and it will hurt you i mean you don't know what to think because I don't even know, like, exactly, you know, what I'm up against. I don't. And that's what's terrifying. The most terrifying part of it is not knowing exactly, like, having to answer, not knowing what it is for sure. Um, that That's, that's the or, – or not knowing what it can do. Um, I mean, if it's related to, like, UAPs or – um, UFOs, or if it's like coming through a portal, or I mean, if it um, can be invincible at times. I mean, you don't know what these things. I mean, I was following, following, um, like I started like researching, okay, and I was start. I mean, people believe different things about cryptids and things like that. All right. But I started um, researching, and I started looking up this thing called the Bigfoot Bioelectric Static Theory, and it was, like, very, very similar, Um, and not in, I guess, ways that things happened around here, and when I say that, I mean, like, the chain of events that's happened here with, you know, the orbs and, um, uh, like, you know, possible Bigfoot, the orbs, the UFO stuff, the quartz. Um, but it's called the Bigfoot Bioelectric Static Theory, and that's where, um, and it's an actual link, and there were scientists that actually performed studies of, you know, that there was one scientist, and these were actually scientists that were involved, but they said that these Bigfoot would consume quartz, um, you know, they would eat them, and they would rub their feet together in, like, a rapid motion, and it would create, like, um, electricity, um, you know, and I think 
you know, they had studied these things, but I know that sounds like kind of like it's way different than what some people believe in. Right. Um, but you know, with our, I guess, our geological area, like with it being like overabundant in quartz, um, with there being like, you know, possible maybe like caves or car systems here, um, things like that, that, you know, it all kind of like, and then um, it just kind of all made sense that they're like kind of like, you know, like they also had to do with um, quantum physics and like um, the electromagnetic field. And they said that these things will follow. This is a theory now. Um, the electromagnetic field, the ley lines of the, the world. So like, and if you look at the ley lines of the actual map of the U.S. or the world, um, a lot of those ley lines, and it look, they look like asterisks and things like that, and a lot of those things, like, I would see similarities in structures, um, you know, with the ley lines. And it just, you know, I guess just things caught my eye, and I was like, you know, well, and, and, but they believe that these things would travel the ley lines and that they would, you know, maybe travel through portals and things like that, wormholes, portals, things of that nature. And I'm not saying that it's like true or of course, because it's just a theory, but to be, you know, closely related to what was happening here. And then like, we just recently started watching the um, Skillwalker Ranch series um, with all the anomalies and things going on there. Right. And um, they have a huge shift in their, um, their gravity there. Um, a huge shift in like certain things that happen like anomalies that are happening over that property um with you know things that are like bending lasers and things like that in the sky and the uaps they would see that would just like dissipate into thin air or just disappear um we see a lot of uaps here which is an unidentified aerial phenomenon or you can call ufo things but um they're just like balls of light and they're like can be capsule shaped around and they're pretty low and they just kind of like float across the sky and just disappear i mean me and my son have seen two of them kind of like going around one another and then like coming together and then one of them going straight up and then disappearing um just things like that so you know and i think that they had a lot of stuff going on at that skinwalker ranch i'm not really for sure exactly um how deep it goes i've i heard um dark waters story on there about the i think it was skinwalker ranch or the maybe a different one but um you know i you know it just seems i it to me and and that's just maybe i'm just my own my own headspace but to know their blood and flesh kind of seems a little you know, maybe different, but they they could possibly be like blood and flesh creatures. But it just seems like they would travel in a different dimension, like than us, or maybe in you know um, related to something else that's not, um, you know, that's not worldly to us. What we know, um, and you know, when what really got me is whenever we had, like I said, we were on live stream, and then I captured them like running across my camera and I heard and you know you can hear before you can see like sound travels faster than the eye if I'm not mistaken but I heard this thud and I said I'm getting out of here because I that the, the thud I heard and the feeling I told you know my husband I was like I, I'm, I'm getting out of here like I, I just don't feel right and I just heard something and he heard it too and then when we got home, like I said, I could see those things running across the screen, and I had to slow the, the camera footage down, and you could clearly see these things jumping and running, look like apes. Um, and there's no, like, questioning about it. You can clearly see them. But you have to slow the camera down to even, and now, mind you, I didn't see nothing with my eyes. And that was what is very unique about it, because, you know, it was almost like I couldn't see you know, with my eyes, but then the camera picked it up. And um, it's just things like that that led me to believe with my, I guess, my own personal experience that it may be something other than just like a living creature that nobody's re actually proven to exist. I, I don't know if that would make sense to anybody or, you know, if I'm just 
I don't want to, like, you know, try to say that I know everything or nothing, because I obviously don't. But, you know, that's just my, I guess, beliefs or based on what I've, you know, kind of wow. lived through and dealt with. So how easily would it get uh, get an invite to your you know, your Facebook private group? Um, it depends. Like, I haven't been on there for a while. Um, I've only shared that video um, with, like, two people that I really, really, really trust. Okay. Um, but, um, you know, it just – I don't really – I would have to know someone, and I don't, I don't want – you know, the betrayal of, like, you know, I don't want somebody, like, if, if I do share something to my son, okay, and then, and they're, like, doing something with the video feed or they're, you know, or things like that, you know what I mean? Or And I and I have never told anyone, even the people that I've, you know, have talked to about these things, where I live at exactly. I have never shared my location with anybody. I'm even careful of, like, watching for road signs. Or anything that would even give give my location away because I just don't want the overflow of people. I have to be precautious on like all areas. I mean, you don't want to attract people that aren't with good intent either. You know what I mean? So, um, but I mean, I you know I had thought about it at one point in time, maybe like you know creating a, like a public page. But then again, I have to be very very careful of what I share. Um, you know what's private and what's you know shared. So, um, and you really kind of want to like, if you if you feel like if you don't cover all the details, then you're not kind of like being transparent enough for it to be believable, you know. So right. it's a sticky situation because I, you know, if if I did say, okay, well, I'm going to create a page or you know make my page public or something, then if I don't, you know, cover like all the details then somebody it could be questionable well you know is she being truthful well you know let me see pictures or let me see this and i don't mind sharing some things i just have to be careful of what i let you know people see or you know so i just don't want a lot of crazy stuff i mean i've been through enough and like i said right now like i'm not dead yet which is a good thing so i mean yeah, i just don't good. want any happening as a result of like you know me not being responsible or thinking it through before you know so i just wow. but yeah um i can see you know, i can see exactly why you do not want anybody around your area you know especially if it's just you and your family and whoever knows where you live you have some a lot of people prying around there would probably take the heck out of whatever it is that uh, you just played a recording with i know i know I, that's one of the things that like i said the fear of mine you know and i don't really know what you know they would somebody would demand information for me for like you know i don't need all the the the, the problems you know what i mean that could probably happen as a result and you know i mean anything that's like you know that you have proof of probably isn't going to you know sit well with other people like and not people that's within the you know crypt cryptozoology or that stuff but other people that don't want people knowing about it you know what i mean all right um you know there's i, I think a lot of things are covered up i really do i think there's a lot of things that they just i mean they just now recently you know, declassify things about UAPs or UFOs. Um, it's just secretive stuff, and I just really think that they don't want some things getting out there um, because people are, you know, from birth you're raised or you're kind of taught to, you know, not think outside the box and, you know, this is the way life is. And if it's anything else that not, you're not familiar with, then it could cause, like, mass panic. I mean... If they said, "Oh, well, we can confirm that this is this is a fact," people would start questioning like religion, all kinds of stuff. People would just go berserk, you know. Um, it would disrupt everybody and whole perception of life and way of thinking. And I just don't think they want that, you know, like leaders and um, like maybe a control thing. I don't know. Wow. It's just a lot of, you know, as as a, you know, it's easy for people to say, well, why don't you leave? 
or, you know, um, do this. But no, I, I don't think anybody realizes unless they're in that position, like, you know, your parents, you've got responsibilities, you've got family, you know, you don't have tons of money that you're paying bills, you know, monthly, you don't have tons of money to pack your stuff and leave out of nowhere, you know, and then you're questioning what's going on. I mean, it's just like nobody really knows until you actually live it or like, I guess, it's, and, and when you when you're like cohabitating with these things, it's not like you can. It's not like the same thing as like if somebody was to go pack their bags and say, "Well, I'm going to go researching at such and such location for research," you know, and because that's what they want to do, and they go camp out or whatever, and they research and they come home. They have a home to go to. When you are at your home and this starts going on, you don't have uh, an outlet. You don't have a way to nowhere to escape to so you have to kind of learn to adjust in the best way you know possible which is really difficult um and you just have to really be sound-minded enough to make the right call and the decisions because one you know one mistake could just it you know things maybe not go the way you want them to so um wow yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> This All turned right, out to be a heck. Of, this turned out to be a heck of a call. I, uh, Beth, I appreciate right. you calling. Yeah. You know, I didn't want it to be like you know. I didn't want to do all like, but it's so much to cover. You know, it's really a lot to cover, and I'm probably well, like, right. there's a lot that I probably haven't even told you. Like, I just, it's a lot, you know. So, um, but I, I'm, you know, it does feel good to get you know to talk or to get things out, and you know, I, I told my husband, I was like, I'm gonna call. Yeah, you know, I want to call and just because I mean I've been, you know, debating on like there's a few people I know that do podcasts, but it's just kind of like an iffy thing of like telling somebody or whatever. Um, I seen Dark Waters in the chat, and I'm like I'm gonna go on, you know, and just just talk for a minute and um, you know tell tell my stories. And my wow. husband's like, you don't have just or we have multiple stories, you know. But there's multiple stories, not just one. I'm like, yeah, something, I get it, but it's still all Something tells together. me you haven't even touched it yet. You haven't even, you kind of scraped the surface of it a little bit. Yeah, you, there's a lot. So. Yeah. There's a lot. I would love to talk to you again. Maybe do an entire show sometime. Well, just you. Okay. But, all right. uh, but you. If you could, you know, send me an email. And yeah, uh, you know how I can contact you. You contact me. You got my number, obviously. However, you want to do it, and I would love to arrange to do an entire show with you. All right, that sounds good. You know, so I probably call private, huh? <laughs> yeah, I saw, I, saw, I saw that. I saw that. I saw that. But uh, yeah, hey. and I don't mean to be like that. But I was like, I'm not gonna like. No, you're not right now. Okay, so, well, yeah. I I'm totally in, into uh, being private. Absolutely. But yeah. uh, if you want to call me and we can uh, kind of arrange something a little bit later, uh, doesn't have to be uh, anytime soon, or it could be as soon as you want to. It's up to yeah, you. Yeah, we can go over it and then figure out, you know, what we're going to do, what we're not, well, you know, what I wanted to huh. do and what I want to do, and <laughs> go from there. <laughs> so um, that sounds good. All right. And it's all righty. Well, it's good talking to you. Well, Beth, thank you so much. You, uh, I was, <laughs> I'm like, wow. I'm glad. I'm glad I just let you talk. I'm glad. This is the re. This is the reason, folks. I allow people to talk. You know, I, I get a little guff every once in a while, letting people just keep it on and keep it on, and it, uh, this is the reason why. You know, mm-hmm. you, you know, let yeah. it get out. Let them get off the chest. Let it get. You know, people talk about what's going on with them. So. Beth, I appreciate it. This is amazing stories you have. I honestly, I if I heard that kind of stuff out in my backyard, I would. <laughs> I don't know. I honestly. Yeah, yeah. I was at the, yeah. I mean, I feel like, and you know, even if time passes, and just say stuff is not that crazily going on at that current time, you know, you you kind of like you. I always have to remind yourself, or for me, you know, like, like we only got growled at one time, you know, which was a, you know, like a threat. So, but 
what was your husband saying happened occurred once a month? Uh, that that loud yelling that you heard on the recording, that like oh, the real loud howling off in the background, like the constant. Okay. That so. was like a once that's a once in a month situation. Um, oh wow. Where this thing, it, yeah, it's it's I, I don't know, you know what exactly it is, but I know where it's coming from, and I know that for miles through that wooded area, it's nothing but woodland. There's nothing there but woods. So, uh, but yeah, that's that's a monthly occurrence. Um, Are there any cave systems but, or anything like that uh, through? Yeah, I think there is. Like there's, um, like I said, like the terrain here, it's kind of mountainous. Um, and then we live at the very bottom of a valley, like, and um, there is like a, a creek here. It's a decent-sized creek, and along that creek, um, it's like I said, it has a sandy perimeter. That's what the, it's kind of like in the creek of sand, and it's real rocky. And it goes, and there's some rock walls that are like 20 to 40 foot, and it goes around the bends. And if you look on GPS satellite, there's nothing out there but woodland and, you know, mountainous terrain. But it ends up running to a major river that goes all the way west to east in North Carolina. Um, it runs all the way from the mountains all the way to the Cape Fear, uh, Cape Fear River Basin, which runs into the ocean. So... I mean, it's a big river, and um, that mm-hmm. this creek runs to, and um, so, you know, I'm I'm pretty sure there is like cave systems or car systems around here. Like I, I've not been like looking for them, especially now since I've heard this. Um, but you know, near when we used to go walk into that creek, um, when we used to go walking up there and hiking and stuff like that, and that's I I like I grew up like an outdoor person like I love to to hike and walk that's just who I am but there was areas um you know on the hillside before that creek area that when you walk it sounds like hollow ground what you're walking on like you can you can hear like the hollowness to the the soil that you're standing on like when you're walking like the thumping it's so weird um so it you can definitely tell it's like a hollow surface um, it's kind of creepy sounding, honestly, when you're walking on it. Um, but I'm pretty sure the ground's hollow in a lot of places. There's also, um, areas, you know, in that same woods that it looks like, and I don't know if these things can do this or, or they have to be something that does it, but, um, there's big gigantic holes that have been dug out and there's no like like soil beside these holes um like someone has like dug it like by hand and like lay the soil to the side and when i say big holes these holes are like four four foot deep by like maybe six six foot wide like you can lay them like you know you can literally lay your body in them and nobody could ever see you you know you could hide in those holes and I, I don't know what digs those big holes out. And then there's no trees around it, like where a tree's falling, and it's just, you know, from the roots um, making the holes. There's no trees around the area. And then there's also areas where there's just mounds of rocks, like, you know, just big mounds of rocks, like where somebody, you know, would, like, have stacked up rocks for, like, 20, 20 foot, you know, in length or 10 foot length, like piles of rocks. So I don't really know exactly who or what would do that either. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. I don't have any proof or, you know, of what would do that or evidence of what would do that. It just doesn't make sense either. And uh, another thing, too, those holes that are dug out, like, it's just clay red dirt. There's no um, leaves in them or, like, any type of, like, brush that's filled them up or uh, you know there's no moss that's growing in them or grass that's growing in them it's very awkward it's just like mud or clay okay. so mm-hmm. i don't uh, know i always thought well i don't know if anything has <laughs> i mean you just think all kinds of weird stuff but i mean i just i try to look for what makes the most logical sense but it, some things just don't make sense anyway Anyway, but, um, 
Uh, do you yeah. do you want to stay on? I'm gonna go ahead and uh, since I'm like an hour and a half overtime, uh, which I'm pleasantly surprised. It was amazing. I actually had a good feeling about tonight with uh, how the show's going to run. Do you want to stay on uh, for just a little bit? Let me finish the, uh, the sign off on the show, and then I can. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to silence you. Uh, I won't be able to hear you at all, but you'll be able to hear me, okay? All right. Okay, and I'll be right with you after I get uh, the sign off and stuff. Hold on just a second, and then I'll talk to you in just a second, okay? All right. All right. All right, folks. Wow, that's Beth from North Carolina that's on the phone. I'm going to try to arrange to have her on for a full show, which I think I about just did a full show with her, but... Uh, Wow is all I can tell you. And Beth, thank you. Uh, for those folks that uh, has never been on the show while I'm doing a show, I usually open and close the show with prayer. I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, and then we'll get her going. Lord Jesus Christ, and I love and mercy, establish a perimeter of protection around all of us, all the listeners, all those who have participated in tonight's show. And those who pray for us and their loved ones, may the holy angels guard us and all our possessions, establishing a perimeter of protection around us, rendering us immune from any kind of demonic influence. Ask that no demonic bondage, door, demonic entity, portal, astral projection, or disembodied spirit may enter the space of 100 yards in all directions of us. I ask that no demons within the vicinity or any that should try to enter here, be rendered deaf, dumb, and blind, that thou would strip them of all weapons, armor, power, illusions, and authority, that thou would bind, rebuke, and disable them from communicating or interacting with each other in any way. Remove them, sending them directly to the foot of thy cross, Jesus, Son of the Most High. Dear God, I ask that you send your angels of mercy, healing, and protection, and support to the folks that have requested prayer. Frank Warren, Shell and Aiden, Amanda and Robert Quigley, Gracie, Julian Jeff, Sharon Guy, Patrick, Brenda, Julie S, Aaron and Erica, Lakea, Razor Wolf's family, Raymond, Tim Tam, Raymond's friend, AJK, Claire Ellis and Dahl for spiritual support. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Folks, uh, go to IamDarkWaters.com. He just redesigned the uh, the whole thing over there. It looks. I just actually looked at it while I was uh, on the show just now. Just got the first look-see at it. So if you go to IamDarkWaters.com, subscribe over there, and you'll get a whole heck of a lot of uh, content that you don't get over on YouTube or you don't get over on the Paranormal Radio app or wherever. But go over to IamDarkWaters.com. If you want to reach out to me, Sean Graham at IamDarkWaters.com is my new email address where you can call or text me, 931-994-6917. And, folks, I appreciate every one of you. God bless y'all. And uh, catch me over Wednesday on Chasing True Sean G on my YouTube channel and here on the Paranormal Radio app, the same thing. Same bat time, no, same not bat time. Uh, I usually do it about 9 p.m. Eastern time, 8 p.m. Central, over there on Chasing the Truth, Sean G on Wednesdays. Or whenever I do uh, get a wild hair, I'll just uh, jump on or whatever. But uh, God bless y'all. And uh, keep it between the mayonnaise and the mustard, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. God bless you, and I'll see you guys next time. Let's, all right, let me go ahead and hit this stop thing, and I'll see you guys later.